Hello, Ash and Early Birds. We got to get Lucio to this next bonfire, so that'll be the first thing we do. I'm just going to tweet that we are uh, we are live uh, for the people. I'm in the midst of a thunderstorm. Are you channeling the quiet dignity of a circus clown oh in the God. midst of a thunderstorm? That one was close. Um, yes. Yes, I am. I actually love thunderstorms, just not when I'm sleep deprived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's a thing. If they could start and end before uh, 11 p.m., that would be, that'd be ideal. Alrighty. So... Our session was our session. Our session was so short last, last time. time. It was yeah, which th through no fault of anybody's except Pixel. I'm just trying to remember. Did, did was there a discussion on the table, or are we kind of starting? I mean, I know we talked a little bit about we're doing the DLC areas. I'm in Kindle, but I don't see your sign. Uh, and I was I was tweeting. I am now logging in. Oh, okay. I mean, like I'm. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Okay. If, if you're watching the stream, then you're seeing the Dark Souls three title screen and you're seeing me agree to some some eulas and now you're seeing me hit continue <laughs> agreeing to name my first child namco bandai or whatever the hell it is you agree to I'm adjusting my mic stand, but you're not seeing that because of how, like, the physical versus the virtual worlds work. <laughs> I am warping back to the snowfield. Der snowfield. Der snowenfield. Oh, that one was bright. Oh, God. Oh, wow. Hmm? I just the uh, the thunder. Yeah, I heard that it's one. Actually, it's actually like the perfect uh, desiblage. <laughs> um, it sounded like it was coming from the game, which was kind of cool. They say blage. Yeah, that was actually pretty great. Okay, my sign is not. I don't drop my sign very much in this playthrough, so it's like on my on my, not on my belt, but on my like. What is that in the metaphor of the game? That like secondary item list you have when you hit uh, start. Yeah, I don't know what that would be. Your garter it's belt, just, uh, your, little, your, wet, your wedding day belt. leg garter belt. That says tool belt, and then I don't know what. So I guess I don't know what quick item would be then. Yeah, I always thought the you know the things you 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 cycle through by hitting down on the D pad was your belt, um, metaphorically. But no, it's funny. That's a little function. I think that's is that unique to this game? Because now that I think about it, I don't. I don't mm -hmm. think you have that in the other I ones. I think maybe Bloodborne has something similar, where you you have like that secondary list of things that are just just a little bit less ex less accessible. Maybe it's unique to this though. I'm all I'm all messed up on pills because we're playing through all these games at the same time. <laughs> so yes, if you joined us last time, I think you saw this uh, this section. You did. You did briefly. it briefly. You saw us get invaded by a, a hacker, actually, around this, oh, around this part. Not a hawker. That would have been way more interesting, but a hacker. <laughs> Down I go. Oh, no. I think we can just hug the left, because all we got to do is get to the bonfire. I'll hug whatever you hug, bro. Oh, sorry, boys. <sighs> The trope of uh, wolves just being an enemy type, wolves and like guard dogs and stuff, uh, I get it. I understand where the trope comes from, especially in, like I just played through uh, Ghost of Tsushima and like, you you know, you want you want dog enemies because they detect you differently and it's, you know, it's it, it richens the broth and whatever, but it does always bump me out. I'm, I'm that sap who like... Oh god, well, I don't even know they could do that. <laughs> Like, whenever I'm playing a new game, we have to figure out, okay, when you kill the wolf or dog enemy, does it make a sad little noise? And if it does, I'm going to need to turn the sound off if Lauren's in the room during those sections. I actually never noticed with these guys. Now, they're, they're, 
they're kind of fierce to the end. No, just like in 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 so many games, there's a little oh, when you know when uh, at the last moment, which is uh, yeah. I was actually thinking about that uh, from the perspective of Minecraft because um, mm. uh, they they do do that sound, and I I'm curious about whether or not that's a uh, we're doing your world right. Oh, that's true. The one modifier I need, I think. Goodbye, cruel world, and then uh, hello, cruel world. <laughs> That is, uh, by the way, that's the name of a very good book by uh, Kate Bornstein, the uh, rather incredible trans scholar and, and author. She wrote a book called Hello, Cruel World, uh, and it's it's about, like, you know, uh, teenagers and, and other weird people, you know, like, choosing not to commit suicide, like, what to do instead, like, why life is worth living. Oh, I got invaded. Oh, I'll be, uh, yeah, I'll just be right back then. All right. I just get this other bonfire, too, I guess. I cannot find where to look at the chat on Restream. Where are you, dear chat? Did they move it, or am I just an old, old man? Or K no los dos. All right, I'm in the chat. If people are in saying things, I'll see them now. <laughs> All right, activate this bonfire. Yeah, there's not too many bonfires in this world, as I recall. So you just yeah. you have the major ones. It's then, what uh, I would it's what I would consider like a like an old school souls design where it's more about shortcuts, right? Like it really is yeah. hubbed around They'll probably kill me on this bridge. That by the way is sort of a callback to the, the painted world from Dark Souls One, which which is <laughs> very low on bonfires. Uh you're you're just uh slowly I seem to recall there was just one, wasn't there at the beginning? It's like uh I think you're right, yeah, because there isn't even one at the end, because you just you just leap off the uh, the uh, the edge, or you you know, or you, all things, or you or you attack Priscilla like a like an absolute monster. Uh, my sign's down by the by the bonfire. Okay, I'm just going to get since I'm already here and I'm invaded. I'm just going to go get the other bonfire, so I can't do anything until I deal with him. You must deal with it. I don't remember where this ladder goes, but I bet it's somewhere super, super chill. Oh, well, I see the person. So I'll either make it to the bonfire or they'll kill me. But I'm I'm cool with either one. Alright. Oh yeah, these shit, boys. Shit, shit, shit. -da. Fight this uh, little Jeff Goldblum's here. Uh, uh. Hello, Corvians. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you still chasing me? Yeah, still chasing me. And then here's the big old Corvian. Let's see if I can get around him. I've never tried doing this actually. Huh. In, in awe of the size of this Corvian, absolute <laughs> unit, absolute unit. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> I literally just need the bonfire, bruh. Then I will fight you. I'm not doing this. Wait, where's the elbow part back here? Oh, I'm on fire. That's not what you want. One does not wish okay. to be on fire. Oh, cool. Dark user. I like it. Oh, nice. The stomach on that thing. Uh, really? Ah. Mm -hmm. We're not, you're going to have to narrate a little if you can, because we, neither <laughs> I nor the people are seeing this. I was mostly just, uh, just kind of seeing what the belt is about. And I tried to parry with a medium shield, which is not ideal. <laughs> it was a, uh, an invader using the dark blade. In the uh, and then a um, can't remember the name of the other one, but it's basically a sword catalyst in the uh, offhand. All right, so oh, we're at yeah. the broken bridge cave, I think. Um, I I ran ahead a little bit, which uh, oh, why did I do that? That's a good question. You ask good questions. Oh, you have you have well, blades for hands. <clears throat> oh, you're over there. I am over there. I don't know if this was the right way to go. I just went by uh, yeah. the sort of nascent Corvians, the little birdlings. Uh, 
I will pull up the stream. Now I can see you. Okay, so I actually would be better off going back to the pond where I was just at. I think I'm close-ish, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm going back, and then I'm going to... Um, I'll be right there. When you go up that ladder, there's a guy in there to talk to. I'll put my sign. Okay. That's an ember. I don't see the guy. Is he in the, the red He's zone? He's kind of hanging off to the side, yeah. I gotta talk to him too, incidentally. There is nothing forlorn about you. There is nothing forlorn about me. You, must be the other Ash, I suppose. <laughs> you look depressed. I'm fine. No, no, you're sad. Oh. Oh, I am Ash. Call this evil dead because I am Ash. Yes, it is not. It's interesting. I thought I had exhausted all of his dialogue because he does sort of talk in circles, you know. Mm -hmm. But there are, there was more. There we go. So that's a hell of a line. Which one? I'm so afraid of, uh, of timidly rotting away like those fools on the outside. Um, who does that refer to? Is that the, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave the question there. Who does that refer to? Uh, did you not see my sign by the way? Uh, no. Oh, should have been right behind you. Oh, well, I don't I'll put it at the bonfire. I don't it's actually, I haven't actually got to the bonfire yet. It's like a little bit ahead. It's not that far ahead. Okay. It's, uh. I wonder if maybe because I put it too close to him. <laughs> oh, maybe. So, uh, yeah, right there, that building. Yes. Yes. All right, I put it right in front of the door, so it should show up. Yeah, I don't know who he's referring to when he talks about uh, the outside. It's easy to assume outside the painted world. Right, uh, right. But it could also just be... <laughs> the people outside of the room he's also in. That's kind of the ambiguity I like. Yeah, the the uh, the layers of who's a fool and who's meeting which terrible fate. I wonder if my sign is still technically down where I left it before, and that's why I'm not seeing yours. So, because I didn't resign. Uh, yep, that's exactly what it was. Ta da! Oh. <laughs> so, um, my Dark Souls one lore is not as sharp as my Dark Souls three lore. So, the painted world of uh, of Aramis. 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 Um that one the, the the theme of that one is more of like a um I'm trying to remember the word. I want to say it was kind of more like it was an escape or like a prison. It's a, that it, almost like Yeah, a, prison but also like sanctuary, right? It's where it's yeah. a it's a place where all the things the gods fear are sequestered but relatively safe. That's right. kind of the idea. And so here it's kind of interesting there's just this other painted world which kind of opens up the idea that maybe like painted worlds plural is a thing. And then also this one seems what I find interesting because, you know, if cycles is the name of the game, this world in particular seems very focused on the idea of like one world ending so that the next one can thrive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, especially like, you know, themes of like rotting, right? Like, and if you want to even pull it into like, you know, meta instances, like do we keep going with dark souls yeah, um, yeah, and yeah, it gets yeah. stale or is it that, uh, <laughs> you know, we, 
kind of just forget it. Like we, you know, we, we finish it so that, uh, we can start something new. Something right, new right, right. No, totally on a metal level. Yeah. Rotting versus burning is definitely, it has something to do with, uh, whether this story or, or, or meta story or, or steroid, uh, can end. Um, at least that's how I sort of take it. Right. Um, yeah, the idea that, that rot is slow, but fire fire is quick and clean and consumes. Right. Uh, so in so how can you how yeah, should Dark Souls rot <laughs> or should it burn? Those are your two options. And you know, I think it's kinda on the nose about like to our you know, for, for as we were sort of talking about in the Adam the Adam guest episode. Um Oh hey Adam, speaking of. Uh ooh, DLC oh, DLC stuffs, he says. Um, we were just saying that um, it's a little bit on the nose that we're we're uh, we're in this world that's rotting away, and there are characters who are concerned with the question of like, do you let something rot or do you burn it? Uh, you know, you could make an argument that we're being on the nose by watching Dark Souls three rot, and we're walking around in rot. Like, is it already rotten? Is something the the game is definitely uh, uh, thinking about. Adam waves, mm. by the way. Ooh, I'll wave at you like in game after we uh, after I kill this blameless uh, local. Hi, Adam. Oh, yes, I do. Anybody else who's watching, say hi in the chat. I'm uh, I'm not watching the numbers because oh, oh boy, because we're not we you know one does one does not stream at five thirty in the morning in order to do numbers. So <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's a lot of Dark Souls loving fishermen and sea captains and teachers. And... If there's anyone in California, they weren't uh, in the Bay Area specifically. They were not sleeping last night. So <laughs> the storm was that crazy, huh? It is yeah, pretty intense. It's um, like really high winds, like 45 miles an hour. Damn, bro. Yeah, the, I mean, <laughs> at one point it like didn't stop. You know, like there's can be intermittent winds where it's like it uh, chills out for a second. Mm -hmm. At one point it was just like it felt like 10 minutes of just straight up. Oh, ah, tolls. Oh, ah, tolls. Is that like a, I don't know what that's a reference to. Is that something? I don't know. It sounds like something. Oop, there he is. Sounds like something Mickey Rooney would say well in yellow face, but <laughs> but there might be more to it than that. Ow. Adam points out that we're monsters, since this is a gentle world. It's inhabitants kind. I know we're the worst. Not Atos. He's not very gentle or kind. Wow. You uh, really took care of him. I mean, he had a sliver and then he survived, so. Oh. You drop down? Yeah, I'll drop down. I got my yeah. cat ring on. Love, love, poise boost. They never see it coming. <laughs> Come back, Atolls. Atolls? Oh, he thought he was going to parry me. That's so cute. What a little man. <laughs> what a special little guy Atolls is. You need to work on my roll catches. Yeah, I'm not great at it either in this one. The timing is just super different in each game. I mean, not super different. I'm We're back, on the I'm order cool. of frames, but <laughs> but it's enough to make a difference. Yeah, no. Oh, you made me kill that guy. Oh, sorry, Ooh, sir God. or madam. Good poise. Ooh, and he parried me. I mean, I'm alive, but... That's what you get for spamming. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, of course. Oh, jeez. Do I not have my parrying shield? I super don't. That's an interesting choice for me. I was using the claymore. I didn't even know. I thought he was using, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the spear sword that I like. Lucio's spear sword? Sharp a store, a great sword. Well, oh, not sharp, yeah, yeah. Not really sharp, but. Right, right, right. Yours is sharp. So that was interesting. Right, I mean, was that good? Oh, wow. I did have my shield equipped. I was just fumbling for the buttons. Well, I'm just <laughs> great at video games. That's why we tune in. Um, that was weird, because, like, he was just fleeing, and then all of a sudden there was a fight. Like, is that is that was is that rope a dope? Are we dopes who got roped? Um, was he wearing us out before actually beginning my guess, to? My guess is that he's a. I mean, just based on what we saw, he's a decent player. He was using a very meta build. Mm -hmm. uh, the armor he's wearing is Morn's armor. And that's mm. like one of the highest poise armors you can get for. Uh, it's like a nice like it, it's not the heaviest armor, but for the poise you get, it's one of the best. And he was also using the claymore, which I didn't notice because I'm an idiot, I guess. Um, which is a very meta weapon. So my guess is that we caught him off guard, and then once he got his bearings, it was just over for us. <laughs> I 
but uh, he, st- he struck me as a as a skilled player, but one who like really really like all of that was table setting. Like the plan was to do the duel on his terms. Maybe. And, and once he could, he was fine. I don't know. I mean, I, it didn't seem very improvised. You know, like it. it I, you could be right. I, yeah, I just yeah. Uh, like I said, it, it definitely seemed like we had him on the ropes, but that he uh, he was just caught off guard and he had to get his barons. Yeah. Flee like a oh. Benny Hill character, sting like a bee. <laughs> I like it. I really like this weapon art. Yeah, that's a good weapon art. You are a weapon artiste. <laughs> I'm going to quote Adam directly here. They're pro strats, okay? Seeming failures are really just RNG manipulations that you're not pro enough to know about. That's true. So you can do what I did, but that's kind of tricky to do <laughs> it's a very obscure jump and i probably haven't heard of it can't pull it off uh boy you're better at those than i am in this one hey nick nope and i'll take just the regular way no i like oh yeah it looks like i'm going the regular way <laughs> i will join you welcome to failure town population you <laughs> Actually, one thing I could maybe do is just take out these uh, owls. Oh, God. Oh, magic. <laughs> getting getting magic up there? Yep. Zap, zap, I do zap. like this weapon art, but it's not as good for uh, one-to-one. Whoa. Oh. This part is genuinely kind of harrowing. Like, <laughs> like... Because they are fighting back, like they are a threat, but we're just—I mean, like this is a home invasion, like. Yeah. I feel like that's dark shells in a uh, dark, dark shells in a nutshell, though. Dark shells in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go around over here, by the way? I think there might be. I stuff. may not have done. He's puking on me. Ew. Nature is gross. <laughs> Can we, like, get rid of it? Uh, yeah. I mean, way, way ahead of you, bro. I mean, if this thunderstorm is any indication. I, I mean, hot take. We've messed up the world a little bit. Oh, Very uh, quick, uh, quick, quick Adam aside. He says, uh, I move that the painted world of Aramis be officially renamed Failure Town. <laughs> <laughs> With a lesser Fieri as mayor. Are there lesser Fieris? Is this like the Baldwins? Are there a bunch of Fieris I haven't heard about? Is there one who's like in Christian... We wouldn't be Christian movies. Who runs like... Chris, Christian junk food restaurants? I definitely want to have... I definitely want him to have a sister named Gal Fieri. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the family adopted a... Uh, oh, I don't know if this is going to be a little, a little spicy, but uh, the family adopted a... Uh, Small black orphan, and they named him Bruffieri. <laughs> Shit, that was a little spicy. I was gonna go for since we have a guy Fieri and a gal Fieri, we uh we have like you know like the, the third sibling is like NB Fieri. <laughs> okay, they adopted uh, they adopted uh, fraternal twins. Uh, one is white, one is black. The black one is Bruffieri, and the white one is Bra Fieri. <laughs> there we are. There we are. <laughs> I fixed it. <laughs> we did it. Adam's on board. Oh, I'm getting magicked. Where'd you go? Oh, sorry. I went ahead, forgetting that you probably don't know where ahead. I don't is. know where I don't know where ahead is. I don't I don't uh, know from uh, No Dark Souls. Did you go up a ladder? No, I actually went down. Let me I come out to where I, I ended up. I'm right here. Well, I'm seeing what's up the ladder. I Which see. ladder? Oh, that ladder. Oh, I can get back to you. Yeah. Oh I'm yeah, there. I'm, I'm going to be uh, joined by a gentleman, aren't I? There's to be. I'm going to be shot by a wizard. A wizard bird. Oh, I'm a coming. So this was kind of a funny uh, DLC to get. This was the first of or the maybe, two. Yeah. Maybe maybe appropriate because so this one deals, like I said, with like the idea of like rotting, and then the last one deals with like literally the end of the world. So. Right. Right. No, it's it's again, it's super on the nose. Like like I don't think the argument is. Um, 
that that the that this game is not aware of what it is. I think that the the argument the argument is like being aware of the gross thing you are doesn't make that thing less gross. Well, I sure got uh got jumped upon. Oh, I'm doing it. Oh. Backstage. Nice. So, did you talk to uh, Sister Freed yet? No. So, in the tradition of like breaking <laughs> funny little like uh, narrative threads, so if we keep going. We're gonna run into her, her, uh, her, her man. What? What? Is that, Ga is that Gale? <laughs> no. Um. Uh. What is his name? I I use all of his equipment all the time, and I can't remember his name. Hmm. But uh. And he, he's going to, like, give you a little spiel, but uh, what was my point? My point Does that here? lock us out of something if we haven't talked to her? No, 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 no not yet. at all. It's just, I'm just curious to see what he will say to you because you have not encountered him yet. Oh, sure. Let's find out I, together. I, I assume he always shows up, but, uh, okay, so this is where I went. I went down her. Grabbing this uh, goo -ga over here. And then when you go through the oh, house, boy. there's a lot more to go. Try and go get Magic Boy up there. Ow. Oh. Magic Boy. Magic Boy. Shoot some magic. It can annoy. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty funny whiff. Champions of Ash, ladies and gentlemen. It's like when Fry has to push the button in the center of the target and he hits off it. <laughs> Love that little gag. Whoops. <laughs> okay, sorry, I was taking a sip of my tea. That's all good, man. I was sipping the tea, Queen. <laughs> Is the tea scalding? The tea, it burns. Would you say that it is true tea? Could you hear that, by the way? Uh, you you sipping the scalding tea slightly? Yes. Okay. I was trying to move. Away it wasn't like it was like gross wet mouth noises, but like it was it was audible. I could you know. It's a, uh, it's a uh, the clean canteen. I love those things. Um, but their their nozzle or I don't know what you'd call it. Um, their sippy thing. Uh, it Sip sounds like you're ripping a bong. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's, <laughs> the, it's way that, the way that it pulls in air. <laughs> if I were foleying a bong sound, that is what I would use. It sounds more like it sounds more like a bong sounds in your head than a bong sounds like in real life. Like <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. So we can kind of drop down on the rafters, I believe. I. Yeah, it is. I, it is once again. You may be noticing a theme. Remarkable how much of this I don't remember. So you are definitely <laughs> leading the way. Yep. All right. I think my brain was just souls mush by the time these DLCs came out. Let's see. I wonder if we can... Can we fight this guy up here? Or will he just fall, I wonder? Oh, uh, yeah, he fell. Okay. All right. How confident you feel about taking on two of these guys at once? I mean, you know, what, what did the people come for if not that? Right. <laughs> oh God. Poise time. Poise time is any time. Got some decent stagger. Oh, but he has a stab. Oh, and he has a slash. He has both a stab and a slash. All right, got one. Working on. Oh boy. I'm with you. I'm with you. Oh, oh I'm alive. Nope. No, oh. he got me on the follow-up. No. I've avenged you. Thank you. But at what cost? It cost me everything. By which I mean uh, nothing. <laughs> because it's just a game. Do the Corvians show up in other games? I was trying to remember that. I feel like they do, but I'm not remembering right. Hmm. There's the Corvian at the very beginning of this world that says to find a sweetly rotting bed to lie in. 
and he seems to have more of like a humanish skull. Yeah, there These are seem like much more bird like the, the Corvians you run into on the road of sacrifices also have that more like human skull. So there are like the uh, the harpy things in, in Dark Souls one and then the other painted world, the OG painted world, which are themselves kind of a reference to a demon's souls thing. But I, I'm pretty sure there are no other games where they are called Corvians like like bird people is a repeated motif. Uh, I mean, not just in Dark Souls, but in like human storytelling. Um, but yeah, I think the word Corvian only appears in this game. Uh, Adam or somebody, correct me if I'm wrong. Not that it's not that it's your responsibility to do so. Just if I'm obviously wrong and that's <laughs> bothering you, feel free to say something. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Corvians as such are a, are a, are things of Dark Souls Three specifically. Okay. So what do we take from the fact that he's attacking, you know, the townsfolk? Is this is this a culling we are witnessing? Is he is he just freaking out? Like, I kind of wondered about that, and especially because like they seem to be of the same species. But you, uh, one thing I noticed about these guys I've never actually never noticed before is uh, he's wearing some sort of variant of the Outrider armor. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I don't you're know right. if you noticed, but like, yeah, yeah he's, he's... Uh, at his hip. He's got that uh, that aesthetic going. Yeah, and he's. I mean, his move set is almost a little bit dancer of the boreal valley. -y. Yeah. And that's the thing, right? Like the intersectionality and like, I, I shouldn't say intersectionality. That there's a better word for it. Cause I'm talking about literally how, like uh, in a lot of these games there is, um, Oh, I missed it too. Oh, well, you got it. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's opposite day here in, uh, here in the painted <laughs> world. The other one that people do sometimes is right here. I don't know how to do this one. Sorry, you said here, but I wasn't looking at you, so you didn't exist. So oh, okay. I don't have object permanence. Oh, I did it. <laughs> um, oh, hello. Well, I'll come it, to you then. I don't know if this one helps me, actually. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, no, we can totally go here. Okay. Oh, um, is how, like, a lot of the creatures' uh, character. Oh, boy, I fell. The creatures' characters have this sort of, like... Uh, I guess for lack of a better word, like mashup quality. Like there's mm. lots of uh, ways in which the character designs will meet up. And that's usually intentional. Like, you know, Priscilla is very glaringly like part dragon, part God, I guess. Um, and uh, God with an asterisk, like Gwen's whole family. Yeah. Like, and, is, there, um, is there a lower case than a lower case G? Because that's the kind of God they are. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, and God is a placeholder term, right? Like. It's ambiguous, sure. Like, like, like yeah, God, yeah, yeah. God in this sense just means like, you know, the <clears throat> excuse me, like the royalty that inherited the Dark Soul or whatever. Yeah, no, totally. I mean it's, it's Or the Lord Soul, sorry, the Dark Soul is very specific, the Lord right. Souls. It's playing with it's playing with the idea of like the the divine right of kings or like what, what royalty even is and you know, yeah. Like, yeah, the the idea that it's ostensibly like a like a generational gift and like special powers or abilities or responsibilities, but really it's just a really successful grift, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's all royalty has ever been. A little analogous to uh, the way that Thor is treated in the comics, how like the, the his, you know they, they, the Marvel comics they uh, they're, they're treated like gods, but they were just always people. <laughs> right, right. It's very powerful, I guess. The aliens. Oop! I okay. Well, we're doing this. <laughs> so we're doing this. I uh, whichever one you got, I got the other one. Okay. I'm just gonna grab my blob before before the worst happens. Okay, the blob is got. Should have buffed and my the sword. Worst may happen. <laughs> oh boy, I'm I'm against some stairs. Oh, I forgot there were stairs there. Oh boy, spatial awareness fail. Okay, okay. This time, I got hit again. Okay, this time. Oh, I'm getting a okay. little messed up here. This time. Okay. All right. I'm in the fight oh, now. I might be dead. Nope. You're not dead. I'm not dead. And I'm coming to help thee. All right, let's see if I can hit him with this. Been on my back foot for a bit. Ooh, he got me from above. Nice. Yeah, love that explosion. Oof. That was a that was a dance. Got a sharp gem. Praise. Adam points out that yeah, he thinks we're right about the Corvian Thang, by the way, and that uh, yeah. the, the bird, the bird folk, the Corvoids in uh, Dark Souls One and Two are, are different, notably different. Have we we haven't encountered them in two yet? For no, our no, we haven't. We will. I think okay. in uh, Aldia's Keep is where we meet them. We meet them. We're not too far from where you will meet them. All right. 
I don't think I can open that door. Uh, well, then I will, because I'm real. <laughs> Only you can open environmental doors. <laughs> Shortcut over here. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. That's what we come for. That whole opening a gate real slow and knowing that we can <laughs> come more directly. I really, I really like the shortcut system. I remember the first time I played this game, uh, you guys were talking about how the... Um, there are way more bonfires than in previous games, and mm -hmm. I and I enjoyed that. But having played this over like multiple times now, I actually wish there were less, um, just to get that that feeling of like, you know, what what the um the shortcuts bring to the game as far as like you know having to map the world and oh toxic eh. I'm outside in the graveyard. Did you go inside? No, I'm around the way of the building. Okay. Uh, there's just items over here. I didn't, don't know what they are, but. I don't coin. know. Ooh, carry on, fair tree. Oh, I you wish. Okay. This confrontation is unavoidable. Noted. All right. Let's just... Oh, boy. All right. Let's that little just, area you just were with the tree uh, reminds me of uh, Bloodborne right before you start going down those stairs. Oh, very much so. Okay, I got to kill this tree or, I'm, or I live here. <laughs> I'm coming to you. Okay. Tree is dead. The tree is dead. Take that nature. Dead, my liege. <laughs> I Teddy Roosevelted that thing. Mastered nature. I'm sure there will be no <laughs> negative consequences for later generations. None. None more consequential. Yeah, there's just I don't know if there's items over here or not. I can't see them. There sure is a creepy well. We have well water at our place out here, and it was like for us that was like, is that that's so crazy? Uh, can, can you even do that? Is it is it full of is it full of spiders? And you know, like <laughs> our, our friends who are less city mice than we are, like you know, most people in the world, you know, have just just drink water well. from yeah. Well, just like they drink water that comes not from a, a pipe run by a city, but just from the ground. <laughs> it's right. it's relatively normal. Like you know, there's things you want to watch out for. You want to test it. You want to. Oh, pump it. you know what? I'm trying to remember. Can I interact with him? Okay, I can. Let's see what he says to you since you've never met him. Every freeing land must be cut. By the way, you just uh, <clears throat> cast a spell and you can't cast spells now. It's meta. He's uh, not thrilled to see me. Hey, friend. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, I can spell again. A, B, C. Easy oh. as one, two, three. Stuck on environments. Oh. What a weird collection of weapons and abilities he has. Yeah, he's a dark build, I think. Which is, uh... With some straight up healing miracles, though. I mean, this this is where we. One of the motifs in this game is that all the all the scariest things in the world are you are basically a Dark Souls player. Um, yeah. So I think some of the some of the NPCs with weirder bags of tricks kind of go with that. Go with that notion. The the we haven't we haven't played the the final boss of the main path yet, but that is very much like just a just a collection of you know fighting various common Dark Souls builds. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The final boss is us, man. There are a lot of uh, yeah NPCs along the way, too, where that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. <sighs> no! There was time now! <laughs> it's not fair! For those who didn't notice, we used the contraption key we got from the guy we just killed. Like, that key is purely just to make sure you don't scumbag past that guy. <laughs> Oh hey. I believe. <laughs> oh, it's you. I can feel the scent of ash upon thee. Thou art the one of whom Uncle Gale spoke. The one who shall be slain. It is good. When this is done, may I return. The door is open thanks to thee. It is good. I'll head off to paint. I promised Uncle Gale I would. 
So I think this is the first instance where we see like a person responsible for the who, painted who worlds. paints the painted worlds. Yeah, this yeah. exactly, exactly. Well, and instantly, as 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 is um, the case in these games, where like you know you were saying this tells us there's more than one painted world and, and all of that. It also tells us that you can you can paint one while in one, which which um, <laughs> which besides just being you know like you know, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> Inception noise dot uh, dot mp3 beyond that it implies that um it implies that all worlds may be painted right like like if the if if somebody painted the painted world and somebody can paint a painted world inside the painted world then maybe our world is itself painted by some like it like it, it you know it's you're a very clever young man but it's paintings the whole way down is kind of the implication <laughs> yo dog <laughs> yo dog i heard you like paintings nice so this area gets a little harrowing. Um, I don't have that bonfire. I realize that's the only bonfire I don't have, so we'll see how this goes. We can run to it with you. I'm a little low on Estes. Uh, by a little, I mean very, but uh, we'll see how this goes, like you said. Gonna buff my... Well, so a lot of... I mean, this area, again, is like some of it is just getting shortcuts. So, like, if uh, sure, hydrogen sure. shortcuts wants to be our focus, we can just try it. Oh, Lord! <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Uh, we're getting followed. Yeah, we are. Oh, I might go down. Nope, I'm still alive. But why? Because you have work yet to do. <laughs> We're not done yet. Okay. There's two boys up on the hill. I'm just going to go ahead and... I see them boys. Them follower boys got themselves in a heap of trouble. <laughs> Backstab. Adam says the idea of layered painted worlds is very juicy, but he doesn't feel like there's that much to, to sink one's teeth into, like, in the text on that idea. Uh, yeah. I, th it is, I think that's true. I think it's one of those things where it just drops the notion and then lets, you know, write, <laughs> write your own extended universe in this space kind of thing. Which is which is preferable to me to the very explicit alternative, right? Like, there, there, there could be a sweet spot in between, but I certainly wouldn't want it to be like you, you know, you find a... Spoilers for the new God of War, but like the part where you you're going through treasures and you find out, oh, like the Egyptian gods also exist in this world, right? I wouldn't <laughs> want that gesture here, where you just like see a painting that is obviously Bloodborne and you see a different painting that is obviously Demon Souls, and it's like, oh, this is all one timeline. Like, I wouldn't want that. But I, I don't. I mean, I don't even think that's the story they were trying. Like uh, Miyazaki was trying to tell. I don't. There's a. I mean, so we talked a lot about like you know what's what's answered explicitly, what isn't, and one. You know, the, your mileage may vary depending on what you, I guess, your believe about his uh, uh, intentional inten intentions behind Dark Souls. Uh, How intentional one and three. are the intentions? But, uh, to me, Dark Souls one and three kind of read like it was always the same story, and I, I'm pretty sure um, uh, Adam, I disagree with me on that. Uh, but I feel like a lot of the stuff that he, that exists here, to me, feels like it was in the outline at least for Dark Souls one. Uh, like there was enough material. It didn't feel like they did one as a one-off and then we're like, oh, well, let's do another one and we'll kind of uh, wing it as we go. It, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't feel that way to me. And, and certainly that's just opinion. I, I don't really have any basis for that other than just how seamless it seems to feel. But the other, the other reason I would assert that is because uh, Bloodborne, as far as it being like a, uh, you know, uh, its own contained story and dark souls two being as weird as it is it feels like those were more their own thing right yeah 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 <laughs> adam is, is reminded is remembering how apprehensive he is for the ring city part of this playthrough just from a story perspective oh, it's, yeah. it's like so i mean we were talking about this earlier um we were in the the, the demon -y ruins but you know from a, from a non maybe not a non-narrative but a non-plot a non <laughs> a non-explicit story uh point of view some of this stuff is just like like it isn't even Dark. It isn't a sequel to Dark Souls. It's it's a it's almost like a like a, a very inventive remake, right? Like some of these areas are promises kept. You know, like this is a much bigger painted world. Uh, the demon ruins in Dark Souls One are are sort of bullshit. Uh, so in this we have a non bullshit version. There's there's been swamps in these games, but they're also just they're they're always just sort of like big, big dark areas with a lot of a lot of fog. So here there's actually like a cool fully realized swamp. Like in, in a lot of ways it. I, th I, th I think when you say it follows directly from Dark Souls One, it's it's that it kind of still is Dark Souls One. Like it's 
I think I, th- I think we haven't talked about this on the stream, but I think of these it's games. On, it's Sonic Three and Knuckles. Yes, this is <laughs> this is Dark Souls and Knuckles. Um, I think of it. I think of these games sometimes like like albums. Like from is like a, a band you like, or that I like anyway, that you and I like. Not that not that you, <laughs> dear listener or dear viewer, are required to like, but um, but you should. Yeah, well, sure. Well, you well <laughs> as with as with any band, uh, it is a moral question whether you like them or not. Um, but if, you know, I, I think of like Demon Souls and, and for God's sake, Kingsfield is like the early tapes, you know, like it's okay if you're not into it, it's rough around the edges, but there's great stuff there. And then Dark Souls is like, Dark Souls one, I mean, is like the, 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 the scrappy indie label release it's still rough around the edges, but it's, you know, it, it, it <laughs> you are morally incorrect if you don't at least acknowledge that it's a masterpiece, <laughs> even if it's not quite for you. Dark Souls, Dark Souls two is almost like, Dark Souls two is almost like, uh, like, a tape of remixes by by or not even remixes like 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 covers and and expansions on existing motifs from like other related bands like Sorry, some of the same quick, members. You're, not, you're yeah. not getting a prompt here. Uh, oh, fell tree. I was in the middle of an analogy. <laughs> um, <laughs> the tree was my the tree was my metaphor, and it has fallen. Um, yeah, Dark Souls Two is like is <gasps> Ooh, Zoog. Zoog. All right, Zoog. All right, let's take the shortcut here. So, what's the lore so with Zoog? So Zoog is, uh, <laughs> I will get back to the album analogy, but yeah, no, Dark Souls 2 is like, you know, when you, one of those albums should that we, I always, should we just fully wrap around and see if we can find Zoog? Yeah, why not? Everybody's um, dead on the way, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are those records that come out every so often that are like, um, I was thinking the one that's like, it's called Do You Trust Your Friends? That's like stars. Uh, it's, it, it's, you know, it's like the album that's already out, but it's like very different interpretations of it. Or like Mira just put out the 20th anniversary version of, uh, you think it's like this, but it's really like this. And it's, it's the whole album, but then it's covers of every song, right? Dark Souls 2 like oh, yeah. does, does things in a million other directions. Um, ow. Okay. Well, I guess we're going. Then. <laughs> <laughs> While we fight him, I'm going to finish this analogy before I lose ow. it. Bloodborne is the side project, right? And, and, and for some people, maybe it's the side project that becomes more interesting than the original. I mean, like the shins. He's sh- definitely iggying, but I don't know if he realizes we cleared a lot of this. Yeah, he may not. The shins are better than flake music, even though the shins, you know, was a side project originally, right? Uh, that kind of thing. Dark Souls 3. Oh, he's, he's digging hard now. I mean, way. we're clear, so whatever. Well, we're not clear. Oh, <laughs> sure. Okay. Not not fully Scientology. Yeah. But all of that to say, that was, that was 9,000 words to say. That's the most sense here. What is Dark Souls 3, then? It's the, it's the, it's the big label album. Right. It is it is undoubtedly more polished in a million ways, but you could forgive a longtime fan for thinking it loses some of the magic. Yep, he's aching. He saw what I was doing. <laughs> All right. Adam is Adam is saying stuff that I will read once we are not fighting a guy, by the way. So Adam, I am not ignoring you, I'm just bad at multitasking. Oh wolves. Wolves. I got the good boys. No, but they're such good boys. Yeah. You got me. All right. So I do need that bonfire. Almost got Zoo. Got him. Nice. Die mad, Phantom. Um, See what I did there? It was, it was quite clever what I did. Um, I don't know where the next shortcut I'm shooting for is. Uh, I would just go back, okay. honestly. Well, then I will. Oh, look, 10 million wolves. I'm going to run away now. <laughs> That's the name of my uh, my 15-minute uh, prog rock song. <laughs> it's one of those songs where like the lyric, there has no lyrics, so like the phrase doesn't appear. But There's like, the lyrics eight minutes in, but sure. only for two minutes. <laughs> right, 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 right. But those words don't appear in it, and it's like, just like, uh, there's a rhythm that could fit those words. So it's like, da, 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 that could be eight million wolves, or ten million wolves, but, uh, you know, it's, you, you never hear, you have to, your, your mind has to connect the dots. <laughs> All right, let's take out this Corvian nightmare. All right, I'm just going to homeward bone, because I'm uh, lost. Lost in the woods. All right, let's see what Adam was saying. Uh, ooh, album analogy. DS1 is kind of the classic. The reason people get into it in the first place. DS3 is the band trying to recapture the magic from the first breakout success, and for me, not doing a great job. Yeah, we're, we're sort of saying similar stuff. I mean, like, I, you know, I think it works better for me and for you than it does for Adam. Fair enough. 
uh, even if DS2 might be good at what it sets out to do for many listeners. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Adam is also saying the song sounds super rad. <laughs> all righty all right Let's um see. can i help you get here are you already here i'm Was almost it? there i'm just gonna try and um if you got it on lockdown i will just go ahead and level real quick yeah i'm gonna see if i can uh wilhelm i'm gonna see if i can grief wilhelm <laughs> i might fail but Let's see. Griefing Wilhelm is the album that 8 Million Wolves is on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very well. Then touch to take nourishment. Yes, yes, I will take nourishment. Give me nourishment. I feel more nourished already. I've seen your kind before. God, I love his voice. Yeah, he's great. He is very great. Who is that voice actor? Because it's got that real kind of like Steve Bl know. Steve Blum like gravelly baritone thing. Yeah. You know? That's, That's my favorite line. You lack the stomach. Yeah, it's very good. We got Steve Blum on the brain because we finally started uh, Legend of Korra last night. Who is a uh, is he playing that? He is uh, the the initial big bad. Uh, um, Amon, is that his name? The guy in the mask? Probably. I haven't watched Korra yet. It's, uh, I was reading some articles that say it's uh, got a lot of good ideas, but just from the spoilers I know about the first season, the execution's a little lacking. We'd, we'd heard such mixed things, and our, our rewatch of uh, OG Avatar was so delightful that we just thought we'd give it a go. Adam says, all caps, it's so good! Uh, so that would be, you know, that'd be an example of the good side of the feedback I've received. So yeah, I mean, we're, we're like three episodes in. Uh, we are digging it. I'm a little concerned that it kind of feels like we have a Brad Bird villain. Um, <laughs> who he's bad because he won't get out of the way and let the special people be special. Um, but I'm, I'm giving it credit that there's probably more going on than that. Adam says he, he kept thinking it, meaning Cora, would hurt him. Uh, <laughs> the As far as like telling a story, I really, really dislike how the first season ends. I don't know if this is going to be like a, I, I'm still trying to not do spoilers. Um, the fa I think they were inhibited by the fact that they just thought they were done after every season. I think if they'd known what it was going to be, they would have had a better storytelling uh, through line. Oh, that's interesting. But, uh, huh. Because didn't yeah? Because they... the, the most interesting thing about what happens to the most, I, in my opinion, the most interesting thing that happens in the first season of Korra is not followed through. It gets resolved in a single episode, and hmm. it feels like an idea that should have been resolved like one or even two seasons later if they were feeling uh, ambitious. I'm pretty sure I don't. I'm pretty sure I haven't seen the thing you're talking about. No, no, um, I, I'm, and I'm trying very careful not to spoil it for you. Uh, yeah, so I so saw Adam's saying, yeah, that first season suffers most from that. So basically, one of the questions, the, the, and I don't think this is a spoiler, but one of the questions that this, the, the series as a whole is grappling with is, like, does the world need the Avatar anymore? Like, you know, mm -hmm. um, what kind of world does the Avatar exist in now? Um, and to what end is the Avatar's uh, importance, like, for, you know, social reasons, for political reasons, blah, blah, blah. Um, and one of the coolest things that I thought they did in the first season was what happens like towards the end of it. But because they didn't, as far as I know, they didn't know that they were going to be um, continuing on. They wrap it in a single episode. Whereas like if you want to kind of use Korra's story as a um, like an inversion parallel of Aang's, they should have just stuck with their guns and had like one or two seasons where the thing that happens at the end of the first season doesn't get resolved. Because that feeds into, the again, this whole idea of does the world need the Avatar? So... I don't know how far you are, but that'll that'll be an interesting uh, conversation to have. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, not not very far, three or four episodes, but uh, but we will definitely follow it through. So so fear not, Adam. But uh, but my yeah. but my hang up again is with the storytelling um, conventions. From what I hear, like characters, humor, like all of that is like spot on. Animation. So I know I know what one of the the pieces of feedback that was that was not glowing. My sign is down now, by the way. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm at the the bon foyer. Um, I didn't die. The bon foyer. Um, I just love, I love in the, uh, what is it? The, this is a total aside, but, uh, I love in the vampire hunter D dubs. They just go out of their way to pronounce like done pure as, as ridiculous as possible. <laughs> There's so many the syllables. Dumb pure. Dumb pure. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. Dumb pure. 
<laughs> it's there is some Swedish chef shit in there, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I know one thing you said to me about Cora forever ago was just that, like, like one one of the places some people get off the train is just like she is very she is a character. I mean, is very in, intentionally an inversion of Ang, where like Ang has this like super rich spiritual life right from the beginning. I mean, he's, he's a fucking monk, uh, but he but he struggles like he's like he's a kid and he struggles to you know, learn the ropes and whatever. Whereas Cora is sort of preternaturally good at most things. And what she has to learn is, is mostly character based. And I don't mean character as in like, she is a character in a story, but character, like being a good person (laughs) type Mm, stuff, you know? Well, and the other thing, like I said, the thing that happens at the end of the first season, I'll be curious to see. Cause I feel like that was, they they dropped the ball on that was a real shame. Cause that would have been a cool thing to watch. I, uh, I will, I'll be more. I'll be more specific when we get there. That's fair. That's fair. Yes, we will discuss as we get further. I think it's um. I think the the re release is on Netflix like as of Friday. Like it's it's pretty yeah. new. Yeah. Haley really wants to watch it, and we probably will. <laughs> I will. I will admit I have a, a one of the. <laughs> this is this is totally a personal and kind of petty reason, um, for not wanting to watch Korra. But I, I definitely have a Poochie relationship with Avatar. Uh, where my poochie is Sokka, and every time I'm watching the screen, I sh- I'm asking myself, "Where is Sokka?" <laughs> if Sokka's not on and screen, even, and even with Korra, should be asking. Even with Korra, I, I remember feeling like I was disappointed we didn't get to see an adult Sokka. Yeah, no, he, he really he really starts to hit his stride towards the end of the the first series, mm-hmm. and it, I just I don't know I would have really enjoyed seeing him. I mean, spo- spoilers for the first couple of minutes of Korra, but yeah, we uh, we we meet old Katara, and and she mentions that Sokka is no longer with us, like immediately, yeah. just forecloses on that possibility. <laughs> like Sokka, I mean, look, Sokka man, I, think, I think I think there's dozens of us Sokka fans, and so I think they really wanted to make sure that they just. Uh, close the uh close the door on that so that we're not left wanting it carries the poochie analogy through Sokka died on the way back to his home planet (laughs) exactly oh boy that's fire greetings from Altria maybe that's Austria oh hey I don't know or I do not know of the place named Altria Akira isn't that the isn't Akira uh, Karusu the the canonical name for the protagonist in Persona Five or am I making that up? You would know better than me. <laughs> the I Persona was, games sound very fun, but uh, very very uh, time not busy. not Austria. It has been clarified. Altria. I'm probably saying it wrong. Greetings in any case. Southeast. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Oh, amazing. Cool. Thanks for tuning in. And pardon our geographic ignorance. We are we are at the end of the day Americans. We're trying, but we're also Americans. So, <laughs> and in some cases, not trying. And we are sorry for those. Americans. Yes. We apologize on behalf of them. There was an anime of Persona. Is, so, are the Persona games like multimedia? Is I, I get the sense they are. I mean, sure. Now. Um, (laughs) I feel like though, there was a, uh, there was a, there was a manga where his name was, uh, was maybe, maybe I'm just high on illicit drugs. It's totally possible. I always do that thing when I play a persona game where I look up, uh, uh, what the, what the, what the protagonist name is canonically is i do that with any rpg with persona i never name them that because it just doesn't feel right it feels like it, it should be me <laughs> you know <laughs> even though they are characterized to various degrees um even though they're kind of like in some ways your classic blank slate protagonist just like it's like you know it's that thing where like the options you are given definitely like like the persona you, 3's, uh, you don't oh, feel like summoning me by the way <laughs> i don't know why i put my sign down that was the dumbest thing i've done today um no, I mean, you know, it's it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So confirming that you took the name from Persona. Cool. I'm glad I caught the reference. Yeah, I'm I um I've I've played three and five. I'm currently playing through four, uh, and loving it a lot. Um Adam got me into Adam who was in the chat, uh, got me into Persona and and said that like really like three is arguably not as good, but it had a special place in his heart, or like it's not as beloved by the fandom. Um, but that it's, it's special in a lot of ways. And if I was going to play them all, eventually playing three first might be rewarding because it's hard to go back, right? It is rougher. Um, but yeah, I love three, four is cool. I'm impressed by how they're, they're all exactly the same, but they're all completely different. It's like dark souls in that way, you know, (laughs) Brazilian and in Southeast Asia. 
That's very cool. Yeah, very, very cool. I know there's I some cultural exchange. I definitely there. miss going other places. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know, not being locked out of every other place. Did oh, you see the uh, man, me too. The, did you see the Yakko sings? Yes. The yeah, if, if you haven't travel. if you haven't seen this, anybody, there's the um the Animaniacs thing with uh with Yakko Warner singing all the countries of the world, but he just it's silent except when he's singing a country Americans can currently travel to with no restrictions, and there are Six of them? <laughs> I think he says Mexico six seconds in and then nothing for another like 50 seconds. <laughs> and yeah, zero, zero worries on the English. Um, yeah, I know there's there's a bunch of cultural exchange between uh, Brazil and, and really all of Asia. I mean, like some of the best sushi yeah. I've had in my life I've had in Sao Paulo. Brazil um, has uh, the largest uh, Japanese population outside of Japan. I've had some decent, um, I'm trying to think, uh, nasi goreng is an Indonesian dish, right? I had some killer nasi goreng in uh, Sao Paulo as well. I miss traveling and I mostly miss eating things when I travel. I think most people who travel love eating in other places. Like that's the, when you get down home and find the right spots, it's really magical. Yeah. Yeah. I got to go to Sao Paulo for, I have a, my day job. I get to travel a fair bit. I'm in tech and, and, um, and you know, part of the reason I keep doing it, um, <laughs> even though I'd slightly rather, uh, write weird novels and play video games and stream them all day and all night. Um, you know, I, I do as much of that as I can, but I keep this job partly because it lets me travel, uh, at least when there isn't a global plague on. Uh, and yeah, Sao Paulo is one of my favorite places I've been. It was super, super cool. Um, yeah, I, I, I've found that, you know, because I, because I, tr you know, the work that I've been doing requires travel. I work with a lot of other people who travel a lot. And to your point, Luce, like to a person, people who enjoy food really enjoy travel. And for people who do not enjoy food, especially, or just aren't that into it or that interested in it, travel is a horrible misery that slowly ruins their lives and or, <laughs> and or relationships with their spouses and children. Um, well, and I, and I think people who travel also like uh, taking in, you know, the, the geography and the history and the uh, architecture and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, food to me seems to be the great, uh, the great, uh, oh gosh, what's the word? Great equalizer, <laughs> great, great yeah. bridges gaps. Because it's yeah, something Kira Kuru, so you should yeah. not apologize to their English because my English is terrible and it's my native tongue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were just up all night because of a storm. Yeah. 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 I'm delirious. <clears throat> I don't um, know if we mentioned this on the stream. I, we, we lost power here in, here in Rhode Island where I'm at um, for 29 ish hours after a tropical storm rolled through because tropical storms did not used to hit Rhode Island or like they did, but like every 10 to 20 years. Um, so we're like, we're not set up to get four in a month like we did in July. Yeah. Okay, making our way. Oh, we should have just taken the shortcut. <laughs> What's wrong with us? Uh, that sounds like a you problem, Mr. Guide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is wrong with me? Yeah, that's now we're getting down to brass tacks. <laughs> <laughs> I take full responsibility. <clears throat> but yeah, I got to see Sao Paulo. I got to see Rio. I didn't really get to see any of the rest of Brazil. And I know there's there's plenty more to it. Brazil is huge. Brazil is enormous. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. Now we're getting down to. So, as I recall, yeah, we could do this now. This is a bit of a bit of a thing. I love things. Ooh, here's a here's a gentleman with fire. Uh, but the, I will say though, this is more item based. Oh well, now we're doing it. Oh. Well, <laughs> you could have opened with "You will avalanche down there if you take two steps forward," but you know okay, that's fine. But since I, I got to go around now because I don't think I can get to you safely since I didn't fall with you. Uh, give me one moment. Oh, I'm getting shot at by the giant, huh? Yeah, no, you're going to uh, you're going to you're going to be dealing with some, <laughs> some yeah, stuff. Yeah, things, right things, things just got interesting. Um, all right. All right. I'm a coming. I believe you. OK, there we go. Oh, hello. <sighs> Millwood Knights. Oh god, they're so strong. Oh, they're so Millwood. Oh, that's so Millwood. Thursdays at <laughs> 7. Ooh, he got me with the axe. Oh, oh lord. I'm fine. I love fine. their weapons. Their weapons are really cool. I love their design. They're like um They 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 have so much weight, right? Like they feel heavy. It's they're good. These are good character animations too, right? I'm this is not oop, I'm not an expert, but I watch a lot of Dan Floyd videos. And just like their movements are so heavy, like they look. Oh my gosh! A few of these games have the problem where there are things that are the size of, of three people, but they don't move like they're big. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, oh lord. And sometimes that's I might cool. die. Ooh. 
having a giant live thing is a valid move. But these things move like they're as big as they are. Yeah. Kind of oh like, my god. <laughs> I'm getting trounced. <laughs> yeah. If these games right. are albums, uh, this. Uh, if these games are albums, this song uh, is a is a Skyrim cover. Oop. Okay. Oof, the tracking. The tracking is brutal. It is a harsh oh mistress. My oh my goodness, friend. All right, I got one. Oh, Lord. I'm getting shoulder slammed uh, more than I would wish. <laughs> Whoa, I died. Oh, oh no. Oh. So like I said, there, this is items. Like, there's stuff down. Oh, Lord. Oh, that's super interesting. I was not aware of that, although it makes total sense that there, there are three million Japanese descendants in Brazil, but they have a really hard time... If they go, if they go back to Japan. They're sort of they, they've become gaijin. Yeah, uh, yeah. Japan has a very interesting relationship with uh, other cultures. That that like, especially like the younger folk in Japan are very like culturally open and like you know, I don't know, appropriative isn't the right word, but you know, they love fashion and music and all of that. But there is this unfortunate stigma when you're like half japanese or you know you, you you're kind of raised outside the culture and that's not uniquely J japanese that's lots of places but um for whatever weird reason i hear about it kind of a lot i think it's like there, there, there's that thing almost in every culture where there's a huge gap between i think i put my sign down again did i why do i keep doing that <laughs> um it's because we've been playing because you're a bro i am a bro i'm just a bro i just i just i want to tell the game i want to cooperate as quickly as possible um, Put my sign down over here so I'll remember to use the shortcut. <laughs> good. Um, yeah, no, but like in the U.S., there, for example, right? And I, I use this example not to make everything about the U.S., but just because I grew up here, so I, you know, I, I know the most about it. Um, there's that thing where there's a huge gap between like making yourself understood in American English and sounding like a native speaker. English has all these silly gotchas in it that make it really obvious, like the rules that are really hard to explain, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. but, the, but that you just know. Um, but I feel like in American business culture, like the, the stigma around sounding like a foreigner is, is relatively light, right? Like uh, more now than 20 years ago, right? Like most people who are going to treat you like a jerk for having an accent are just considered assholes by most people. I feel like in Japan, that thing where like if you don't speak Japanese like a native speaker, it, it is going to close a lot of doors for you. You know, yeah. like the the that gap between under you know uh, 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 intelligibility and fluency has a lot of cultural meaning attached to it. That might that might be one of the differences, but I don't know. I haven't, I have I have never actually done well, business in Japan. So I don't and know. one of the things I will say is that when I hear about it, I hear about it the most at an adolescent level. Which is not unusual for any like culture, you know, that at, like at that age, you tend to approach, you know, difference very kind of like uh, almost aggressively for mm, whatever mm. reason. I, I, you know, like you're, you're trying to form your own identity. And so then I, I guess, I don't know, I feel like I'm, I, I feel like a child psychologist would probably be better <laughs> able to explain it. But sure. At that age, you're just more prone to, you know, whatever right and like i remember hearing about when i you know travel i've been to japan twice now and i remember just hearing about how like uh you know the further away you get from the big cities you know people might look at you funny etc cetera, etc cetera. but i found it interesting that uh I, I had a few encounters with like elderly japanese folks who i was sure might have an issue and you know both times i went i had you know my full afro going and um but they were they one they always appreciated when i would try to you know speak japanese and you know, having studied it briefly and then, you know, when you're in the country, you pick it up very quickly. Um, I was, you know, not fluent, but, you know, I could passable. Um, you can carry, you can carry on the conversation. Concerned. Yeah. Right. Um, they were always very friendly and very, like, uh, um, complimentary about my Japanese. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They, they, they didn't seem to take any umbrage with it. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I yes, I don't I don't know. I, that that I mean obviously I could have done more traveling and interacted with more elder people, but my experiences were very like, you know, they weren't as uh weird about it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah, I mean um yeah, for me it never it never got past gently making fun kind of thing. You know, cuz like like you said when you're when you're in a country for a while, you get you get better at the language and even if you can't like you usually can hear it better than you can speak it for a bit. So we yeah. definitely like, you know, we heard people talking about us who didn't know they we could hear them talking about us kind of thing. And and it was never terribly rude stuff, you know. 
um, if, if anything, we heard some relatively rude comments about uh, 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 about some Korean uh, uh, tourists uh, that uh, you oh know, dear, they didn't think we could hear. It was it, they were just honestly like really weird specific stereotypes. We were in this like really really good uh, seafood place way in the north. Um, oh god, ooh. he's red eyed by the way, so just oh <laughs> tread lightly. Yeah, I see that now. Um, I, I got some good licks in before I noticed I should have been afraid. And uh, have him. he's huge. We were in this little town called Otaru, ooh, which is like a renowned seafood yep. town. They make like Backstab amazing them. sushi. And uh, this Korean couple walked in and ordered uh, ordered the crab nabe or something. And we just heard like one of the cooks mumbling, uh, "Yeah, Koreans don't know how to eat crab." And I was like, "Is that a thing? Is that a stereotype? Like <laughs> that they eat it wrong?" I, I don't know. It could have just been that one person having a weird opinion. Oh, by the kind way, kind of a funny aside. Um, I, I, you know, in, in the Bay Area at least, um, a lot of Japanese restaurants are Korean owned. Mm -hmm. And um, totally. I, I, I actually really always, I shouldn't say always, but there are several restaurants where I've enjoyed the food more when it's like Korean owned Japanese or like Hawaiian owned Japanese. Mm, um, yeah, yeah. Especially when it comes to like the non like uh, sushi items where it's more like, uh, you know, the bentos and stuff. Totally. I really, really like it. There's a ton of Singaporese folks oh, in God. Toronto. So like sometimes, yeah, good, good food from all over is in fact made by, you know, good Singaporese cooks. <laughs> and then I think, I think like, um, one of the, one of the best sushi places in, uh, in Seattle is run by a Vietnamese dude that melting pot i will say by the yeah. way akira, akira says the uh, the thing with like um japanese brazilian folks going back to japan is like that episode of the sopranos where uh where polly tries tries to be italian in uh in napoli <laughs> which yeah that's a good analogy <laughs> i definitely um like again like americans especially like white americans have that weird relationship with that like i am um, one of the last places i got to go before the world went crazy uh was uh, was uh, was ireland and uh, you know, oh, I forgot about that. It so was jelly. It was a blast, man. And there are a lot of um, folks of Irish extraction in the northeast of the U.S. Uh, but they're, you know, they're like their fifth, sixth generation American. So like I, you know, the guy, the guy I buy fancy bread flour from because I'm that guy um, was was like. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry. I always think of that tweet. If you have a friend who is getting really, really into bread making, I have promised you they are deeply depressed. <laughs> I think I have found that to be true. Um, I, I I got into it at a time that was a little dark, but I'm better now, and now I can make bread, so that's fine. Um, but no, but the, I mean, the, I think that's across the board. Most hobbies, oh, yeah, like yeah. you get into a hobby to kind of pull yourself out, and if it's and if it does pull you out, then you're all the more passionate about it. I think that's true. Yeah, yeah, because then it then you know punk rock and uh, and baguettes saved your life. So. Um, but yeah, I know this, this dude, you know, saw like the sweater I was wearing and I was like, Hey, I got an Ireland. He's like, Oh, I've never been. Um, you know, we were, I, you know, he, he, he's like a, a baker and a milliner and, or I'm not a milliner, a milliner makes hats, a miller. <laughs> um, but he, um, Ooh, I got hit by a fly, but he was, you know, he was just like, I've always wanted to go, but I'm like, I, I would feel so bummed to feel like an outsider. Cause I feel Irish, but obviously that doesn't mean to me what it means to them, <laughs> you know? Right. Right. Um, Oh yeah, I didn't bring fire. That was dumb of me. Uh, if I light my weapon, does that count? No. Oh, of course uh, not. I have a. I can wait. I think I have. Yeah, I have blood red moss here. Yeah, I have some too. Oh, well, I left you one just in case. Well, thank you. For those who are just joining us, um, these things will infect you with. Horror. Oh, you know what? And I'm dumb. I have caressing tears, so just remind oh, me next time. I will. Time. Yeah, these things will infect you with horrible worms that make you bleed, and you need to you need to either burn them with fire or use items to mitigate the uh, mitigate the horrors. Everything's gross and rotting here, because That's... themes. But yeah, I mean, like I I, I think I basically talked. I don't know. I think I talked this dude into taking a trip to Ireland, but then the world went crazy, so I'm sure he hasn't gone yet. Um. But, you know, it's like, I mean, you like bread. They like bread. <laughs> like if you <laughs> if you make flour and bread for a living and you've never had a freaking like Irish brown bread in a little little pub or something, then you, you haven't lived, my friend. <laughs> Which is not to say you have to like I'm not being that hipster. Where it's like you have to go to Ireland to really eat brown bread. There are Irish pubs all over the world that make delicious brown bread. Just like. Oh, hey, what's up? It's best level. Happy to have you here. Welcome to uh, welcome to this uh, semi disastrous Dark Souls three playthrough. We're talking about uh, we're talking. We about, are not professionals. We <laughs> yeah, some assembly required. Um, oh, we're here. You, yeah, that is I one of those. Did you, did you get this bonfire? I've, I've usually you come here first. That's why I, I didn't. I went I went straight down the ladder like a big weirdo. 
It's going That's good, good though. We're we're talking about the travel we miss, and we're uh, we're playing some uh, Ashes of Ariandel. That doesn't open, at least not right now. So you so you have to open it from the other oh, side. Oh, funny. Okay. Well, I mean, that's easy <laughs> enough, right? I just I just run across the bridge. Um, yeah. Let's let's have this conversation real quick first. All right. Do while I you want... do that, I'm gonna go potty. Okay. Sounds good. I think I'm good. Return from whence thou camest. I presume it visible to thee. The bonfire here in this room. The meek and faded thing, but twill guide thee nonetheless. So this is a pretty standard Dark Souls trope. We're like, you're trying to be talked out of the thing you're you're doing that you're definitely going to do anyway. Um, this happens a fair bit. That ring will help us not get so frosty, which is nice. I don't know if we need it, really, but... And that alone is cause to rejoice. Be forewarned, eager Ash. Should this world wither and rot, even then... And I'm back. Welcome back. Speaking of tropical storms... It's uh, 7 o'clock in the morning in the Bay Area, and it's currently 75 and raining. Wow. We we might have broken the planet a little bit. No, nah, it seems fine. <laughs> I don't really see a problem. So here's a little speculative lore. Uh, something I just realized is that, uh, um, so in this, we're brought here by, um, by, uh, oh my gosh, the slave knight Gale, um, mm -hmm. to help, um, to help the girl paint a new world, right? Right. So kind of almost sinisterly, we have Sister Freed here. And if you look at all these paintings, they're all of like the same two subjects. And um, it, I wonder, so d is the girl's compulsion or is her nature that she has to paint, but they will like, but sister freed and uh, the father who will encounter later, uh, uh, do they not allow her to paint the new world? So they just force her to paint the same things over and over again. And you can see like some of them are just straight ahead um, uh, portraits and then other ones they're like on fire. <laughs> so, oh, so, like, wow. Yeah. It's, so it's interesting. Like, so she's like, uh, they're really like, uh, it, it's so, uh, you know, speaking of cycles and, you know, repeating uh, motifs, it's like someone else is trying to keep their, oh, I'm Brian. Someone else is trying to uh, keep their world going, as it were. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, I, I have never noticed that that artists cry for help. That's kind of great. Yeah. Let me out. <laughs> Let me out. This is not a painting. <laughs> Oh, he opened it. <laughs> it's actually very open. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Then, right it, into it. It sure is Brian. <laughs> that's that's Brian. All right. That's Brian for you. Ooh. Ow. Is he using, are those the Millwood axes? Is he using the weapons? Uh, no, that's the twin axes. Oh, you're right. Ooh. Hey, friend. <laughs> Brian. This is not Brian. A If he goes across the bridge, he's not gonna go across the bridge. He can't. He must know. Oh, I missed. Do be careful though, because he might. Uh, he, the th the Iggy in this instance would be to go by your NPC. Oh, to know? try to try to kite you into killing. The yeah. NPC. Yeah. We, not gonna fall for that. Oh, but he could just stand there and heal, and we would be afraid to attack him. Yeah. Exactly. I, however, cannot hurt your NPC. <laughs> <laughs> I, however, do not share this problem. Ooh. 
Roll catch. Oh, so close, so close. Uh. Got him. Yeah. Oh, that was a... That was a respectable one. You gotta praise the sun for that. I am sleepy. <laughs> oh, you taunted. That was rude. All right. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting, this painted world. I love little things like that, and I guess to Adam's point, I like one, yeah, because <laughs> so obviously they introduced that in this game, so unless they do Dark Souls 4, question mark? Mm -hmm. Revenge of uh, Ariandel. We won't have an answer <laughs> to that. It's just uh, speculative. Yeah, too fast for souls. <laughs> so when we were talking about the uh, the painter crying out for help, this is the, the painter in question who we met, who we met earlier. Well, she doesn't move up there until after later, I think. Totally. But that isn't. No, oh, wait, she's, she's here. Yeah. Oh. Hey. Cold, dark, and very gentle place. But first, I must see Flynn. I wish to paint a picture of a cold, dark. Yeah, one of the things I really enjoy about this game is the idea that like dark does not mean bad, mm -hmm. but that uh, the powers that be, like Gwyn, they were of the of the light, as it were. So to them, of course, dark would be bad. But from the perspective of the uh, chosen undead and the enkindled, uh, humanity is actually most in their natural state in the dark. Yeah, there's. We were talking about this in a previous episode that like there's even that um, that little that little moment in Dark Souls two that sort of implies um, or or says at least from one character's point of view that uh, that uh, humanity's natural state is actually something closer to hollowing like hum humans are, are not naturally mortal Gwyn made humans mortal as a way to control them so right. like hollowing is maybe a monstrous version of humanity's true form but it, it it's it's not totally the wrong direction which i think they follow through with with the the hollows of londor in this one which is a, a side a whole stream and a side thing that we completely borked up um <laughs> well and uh yeah if I, oh shoot wait a second Am I getting turned around? There's a way to get us? down. There's a way to get down there without uh, dropping down. But I'm trying to remember. Mm. It's like a hidden. Oh, it's here. I think. <laughs> Dark didn't mean bad until the puss of man started showing up. Says Adam. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, uh, Vadi Video pointed out that um, that the 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 dark sign is fire encasing the uh, you know the abyss or the dark. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. the fire like keeps it from achieving its natural state right you're thinking there's a, a thing here there oh maybe here there there is somewhere i'm just trying to remember where uh usually there's like a sign that says here but i'm not oh lord we're back to me not remembering stuff i don't remember uh <laughs> i think my blob is still down with the millwood knights isn't it Oh, is it? Yeah. I mean, we could go get... Oh, here. It's not a huge We deal. could go get it. I don't know how much it was, but... I don't remember. Yeah, door. <laughs> Be wary of door. Fire to light the way. All right. <laughs> Good morning. Is that Ian? That is Uncle Ian. I'm sure he slept as miserably as me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the heat you I, you eventually fall asleep, but when there's like thunder and like high winds that don't stop. It's a little more disconcerting. There's something, um, I don't know, atavistic about it. You know what I mean? Like, there's just something deep inside you that's like, I can't sleep right now. I have to be ready. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely like an instinct. All right, give me a second. Oh, wait. Did you get rid of it? I used a moss clump. Yeah, I forgot. Oh, I okay. But in the future, yes, let's do that. I mean, you have moss clumps there. That's I mean, I don't too. have a ton of them. Yeah, may as well save them. Should we become separated? And I'm wormy. Stop it. Thank you. That is Have not going to fly. not being wormy? I would simply not become wormy. 
Oh. Ooh, that was thunder. Yeah, this is definitely uh, some kind of tropical storm thing happening here. What did we do to this world? What's that line that Lisa says? <laughs> uh, or Homer says, Lisa, there's no uh, record of a storm ever hitting, of a hurricane ever hitting Springfield. Yes, but the Hall of Records only goes back to uh, 1917 <laughs> when the Hall of Records mysteriously <laughs> blew away. <laughs> yep. I know, right? <laughs> What did he say? He said this came out of nowhere. It was like 90 the last two days, and then all of a sudden there's just it's raining and there's a storm. I mean, the truth is I, I kind of dig it. I just wish I'd been able to sleep a little better. <laughs> oh, no. Being under a safe roof in a big storm is, is a cozy feeling, but but especially yes. when the when, you know, the weather is untimely and whatever. It's it's hard to it's hard to enjoy it. <laughs> I was losing health. I don't remember the worms doing that before. So I don't know if that's like specific to this area or at least these enemies. Adam is saying one of his brother's friend's dads, uh, if you follow that, literally went by the name Wormy, which I didn't know. Why? Oh, no. <laughs> Why? Was there, a, was there a story there? Was that, a, was that a reclaimed insult? Was it, was it short for something really weird? I always wanted a weird nickname. I mean, never got it. It's not too late. It's just, I feel like it's one of those things that only matters if it happens organically. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. It's like our friend, like our, our good friend who is uh who is a, a doctor of, of some, of some note and renown and accomplishment and still goes by fuzz to not to his patients, but to, to a lot of people. My heart melts when I remember that uh, his wife told us that even in her own head, because they met, uh, he, she met him as fuzz in college. Um, she she does not think of his real name. She just, she just calls him Fuzz. It makes me really happy. There. Oh, here. Wait. What is this? It. That is not uh, it. There's another door. <laughs> he had a vanity license plate that says Wormy. <laughs> you have a you have a girl's name, Akira. <laughs> You have a girl's name. I have a, I have like a, like a gender neutral name. I'm Drew, right? So like that's, you know, growing, you know, in, in elementary school, I got, I call, like I called Drew Barrymore a whole, a whole lot. And then Drew Carey became a thing. I mean, yeah, man, that was the only reference. And, you know, kids will, kids like will. as an insult or just as a thing? I mean, little, in that little kid insult way where it's like, you know, just calling a boy a girl's name is supposed to be insulting. Like it wasn't, it wasn't a deep burn. It wasn't, a, mm. <laughs> but I think it, I think it was meant to be. Hurtful. <laughs> I get. <laughs> I mean, I eventually started going by Lucy in some circles because it was just easier. But uh, it was funny because the the older crowd always kind of cocked an eyebrow, but the younger crowd loved it. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, and our, our you know Francis is Frankie. Mm-hmm. Did I ever tell you this? My my parents this is my parents have a story that I think we've told on this stream that uh, that they love even more. So you maybe haven't heard this one as much. But uh, when I came home and said, "Yeah, I made a really good friend today in, in kindergarten," when when Lu when Lucio and I met, by the way, dear 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 viewer, um, <laughs> my 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 parents totally thought I said Lucille, and they were like, "Oh, you made friends with a girl? How progressive!" <laughs> and then like, <laughs> for some you came over, they're like, "Oh, Lucio, gotcha, gotcha." Like, yeah. <laughs> Not that they were like disappointed, but they were like. <laughs> <laughs> then they saw that I was uh, a person of color, and they went, "Oh, just oh. as progressive! Oh, wow, <laughs> <laughs> we're doing great! I'm so glad we moved to California." <laughs> <laughs> Adam says, "Not directly related, uh, but my meaning his middle name is Kramer, and when I was in elementary school at the height of Seinfeld, oh, ooh, ooh, mm, youch, <laughs> not ideal." <laughs> So she's not your friend anymore, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, that wasn't obvious. Friendship ended. Oh, here it is. Incidentally, I found it. Oh, yeah? I think. Oh, that was a nice one. You're right. But you can't go through it. It should be a fog wall, I think. This is just a... Uh, so this is a... Uh, Lazard. A pyromancy spell, as I recall. So it's not as important if you're not interested in that. I've really sort of committed to a, a pretty tight build and it's it's been fun just to commit as i say but uh yeah whatever i'll get things yeah it's just a fog wall 
as predicted by my esteemed guide. <laughs> so it's more like if you wanted to go back and get that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate it. Uh, okay. So, so far, I've done exactly none of that. We probably should at some point. I should go um, finish things with Henri because we never did that. Oh, right. That would be. I think that would just be you, though, right? It would, yeah. There's no small soapstone in this one, uh, like in yeah. two. So I think that's that's a solo adventure. And that's it, right? I haven't been soloing in this game at all. I've only been playing when we play together. So I got to end at eight. Okay. Um, we could we could ostensibly just end the world of Arendelle because we're we're ready to take on the boss now. I mean, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a that gives us a nice little narrative arc. All right, let's go do it. I can't remember. Well, I might uh, want a fresh set of Estus, but uh, no, no, no. That that's fine. I I was thinking more of uh, <laughs> I as I've played these games, I've gotten more into the sort of like uh that that witcher thing where it's like i like to think about even though it's it's so minuscule i like to think about like what is the you know boss weak against what's the best weapon to use it's uh it's this, interesting how say how those little those little things can make a difference in the in the stretch this game does reward that it, it's not one of those obnoxious things where it's a hundred percent necessary but it's because to me like that that does usually go to like in the witcher it makes sense because you're i mean you're preparing to fight monsters in an incredibly specialized way oh real quick i just remembered so one thing that's down here is total is a totally optional area so like oh, i said yeah. we, th there's no real lore purpose to go to break this and go down so oh say, let's do it okay but then that means we might not get to the boss um that's okay i mean if, if hey chat if that would disturb you terribly to not see the boss today then then say the word and we can <laughs> you can choose our adventure for us um <laughs> But it's like the, the Netflix moment. special. We do, we just don't have the little line that goes across. Yeah, exactly. What do you think? And then we're twitching and we're we're twitching and I'm I'm holding both cereals. <laughs> there is a professor of something or other who's been um putting online oh. some of those old like what what's up? Oh no, I I thought I fell. Yeah. Yeah, pr um putting cuz like in the early era of DVDs, those like choose your own adventure things had kind of a resurgence. Like a lot they were like bonus features a lot and um there's actually one called I'm your man that played in theaters. Like everybody had a little button and you voted on what would happen next. Some Wait, of them are for real? Yeah, yeah. Some of them are showing up online. Um the site oh crashed because he he found out oop, I slipped. Oh, that was uh, <laughs> that was the incorrect choice. I mean, I'm alive. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Cat, cat ring baby. Um, yeah, there's, there's one that was like Steven Spielberg's director's choices or director's chair or something. And it was like supposed to be like a game, a game about making a movie, a movie game about making a movie. And it had like Quentin Tarantino in it for some damn reason. And, um, yeah, the site crashed because so <laughs> wow. many people were playing this terrible game. Um, if it, if it goes back up, I'll link to it on the, on the channel. Cause I did not get to play the Steven Spielberg one before it went down. The guy actually tweeted, like, my bandwidth costs are going crazy. Please stop playing this crap game. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love the fringes of, like, weird media like that. Yeah, yeah. It's such a specific thing. There's been kind of like an FMV game resurgence, too, with, like, Her Story. Ooh, Her Story and um, Telling Lies and, and those kind of games. Yeah, I know I saw, I think, an ad for something that was, uh, oh, I might be dead. I do have my cat ring, but, oh, no, that was just far enough. I'm alive. Nice, 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 nice. But nice. I'm at the bottom of this now. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's so where I don't I'm... know if I can help you. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know if I'm going to survive this fall. Oh, I did. Okay. So this guy, I don't know how to coax him down, but the bonfire is right over there. I vaguely remember this area. The bonfire. Yeah. Chad has been totally silent about where we should go, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take that as a dealer's choice. <laughs> so from here we could go do optional boss or go get a Titanite slab. Uh, I don't really need the slab. Let's do the boss. All right. So this is definitely a callback, and we'll probably piss Adam off. <laughs> I'm low on Estus here, but I mean, let's try. Oh yeah, yeah. Hold on. So the danger here is I have to uh, I have to anger a crab who might notice you, so you might want to reset after. Uh, well, oh, I guess shoot. you're going to get asked if you will. Let's see. Oh, this crab is messing me up. Oh, there's two of them now. Let us meditate on the strength of the crab. Ugh, crab boys. Oh, God. <laughs> is it weird that this area makes me hungry? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. You, <laughs> you're a New Englander now. Crab should always make you hungry. Yeah, man. There were good soft shells this year, but those don't come from New England. They, you know, they come oh, from a little bit further no. south. Oh, no, I'm saying he has to teach in person? That's awful. 
Why would what? Why would they do that? That seems not like a thing you should do. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> we're streaming, so I'll 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 spare my my true thoughts about uh about what Adam's gonna have to do in terms of uh, in terms of teaching in person. But <sighs> also, hi Ian. <laughs> Okay, so you have this bonfire. I can just resummon you. Um, I we'll have it in a second. It's easy to get. Okay. Painted world of Ariando. Well, you know what? I'm gonna take a just a, a super quick uh, uh, bathroom break. Uh, While well, you do that, I'll be right back. All righty. My dear friend Ian and I were just, uh, yes, just talking about um, our brains are kind of broken from uh, the memes. <laughs> In response to the anime brain parasite. <gasps> All right. Alrighty. Okay. Perfect timing. What excitement did I miss? I have a brain parasite. It's called <laughs> anime. Did we already yeah. comment on that? Because that's uh... I would, I would, yeah. I was telling him that I was I was saying that uh, Ian and I were talking because Haley, my daughter, um, likes to often say that she gets lots of fun information from us, and we just tell her our brains are broken that she shouldn't. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> she can have fun listening to us, but uh, we're not telling her anything useful. That's. I mean, that's probably not 100% untrue, but it's probably no, mostly no, no, it's, untrue. It, <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, I'm leveling up quite very quickly, and I'll be back. No K. I like that, no K. I'm going to remember that. It's to confuse people. <laughs> wow, the thunder's really coming. Yeah, I can hear it every so often. It's, it, it, honestly, we're making a delicious soup between the game the game audio and your uh <laughs> your starman sorry i had to rip the bong there real quick wake and bake <laughs> souls and souls and bowls all right <laughs> ian says pro honestly should probably unplug everything <laughs> i mean is if he, he in is he in the chat he is, is he, he, he on? He, he's on twitch Oh, okay, I'll say because I don't have Twitch open, so I'm not seeing him. I think I can give you the restream link so you can see the combined chat for all the different places people are watching. 
Um, is it all integrated now? I don't. I don't know how streaming works. So like, are you seeing <laughs> the YouTubes and the Twitches? The yeah, and I get a little icon to know who's saying what where. But I'm in. A, I'm in a tool called Restream that um that basically like syndicates this to all the all the relevant places, which currently is just Twitch and YouTube. Uh, if if anybody watching would prefer to be watching this somewhere else, let me know and I'll put it there too. Um, we were on Mixer for a second too, but then Mixer uh, sort of began to stop being a thing. Hey, why are you running in midair? That's weird. Huh? You know, I don't know. It's kind of cool to watch, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those uh, twenty twenty in a nutshell. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, Adam, prepare to hate this game more. In three, two, one. Not yet, actually. It's actually, yeah, like not even at the beginning. Champion's Grave. God, I love the boss music in this game. It's all very good. I am I am honestly quite excited to hear the, the Demon Souls music in that remake, not as the middiest midi that ever midied. So it is getting an orchestral... Uh... They haven't said, Fixed but it's, it's, it's it, it, they haven't said, but it's it's hard to imagine they wouldn't. Oh, friend. Hey, buddy. So a couple of things about this guy. He's obviously a very optional boss. Um, one of the things I find interesting is he's wearing um, the dark helmet, but his um, chainmail is kind of evocative of the uh, the forlorn undead. At mm. uh, Firelink in Dark Souls One, <laughs> Ian is now in the uh, YouTube chat. By the way, oh hi, oh hi, wow, Ian. We are uh, we are messing him up, which is fine because now we can focus okay, on the thing. So, Adam, I have no answer for this to be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> all I can say is, I guess something that's sort of they're they're building on is the idea that I guess these giant wolves can just be companions, which you know. To your point, kind of takes a little bit away from the mystique of Sif. If there's just a whole race of these things with, you know, no further lore explanation. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, because the the implication in um, the implication in one is that Sif is is somewhat unique, right? That he's like he's like a crocodile. He has negligible senescence or whatever. So he just he just kept living and kept getting bigger. Um, but also but also bigness. Um, in Dark Souls 1, anyway, has this weird symbolic quality to it. Like, thing, people are bigger when they're more important. Also, he's red-eyed now. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Um, he's much more aggressive. In some artistic traditions, right? Oh, like, God. Ooh, you, just, you just draw, you just, you, um, you draw our painter etch the king big, because the king is, ooh, we were so close, wow. we got me. You got got. I did get got. By DS not stiff. Akira says DS1 OST is the best. That's a bold claim, but I might agree. There's, there's some... It, you know, I would probably agree. It, de but DS One is also um, uh, MIDI. I think a little bit. <laughs> like, like, like an three has too much ooh ah oh. sangre. <laughs> <laughs> I don't disagree. I don't disagree. I, I would agree. I mean, there's a reason that the Dark Souls Three soundtrack lends itself to uh, the memes, as it were. Yeah, I would say if you want the the lush orchestral thing, Bloodborne did it better. Um, See, the Bloodborne music doesn't stand out to me as much. I should. Nah? Well, I mean, we we are gonna replay that game because. I, um, that game is tricky, right? Cause it's so easy to just jump into chalices and keep going, but it deserves a replay. <laughs> yes, no, for sure. For sure. No, we should, we should, we should do it again from the, from the, the stippity start. It's good. I mean, um, I talk on the, on the podcast, I talk a lot about that, that GDC talk where they, 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 the composers of Bloodborne or one of the composers and then the producer, uh, talk about how they wrote it and it's like there's like a shocking amount of discipline because there were three different composers on the game they picked like a set of instrumentation that everyone had to stick with and it's like not it's not 10 million pieces you know it's like a like a reasonable orchestra size and like you know instruments that sound sound bram stokery and whatever like there there's a there are rules and i think it like it shows right here there are no rules it's just like oh we got a choir Ooh ah sangre um <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I've listened to this soundtrack a lot, and uh, it is a lot of the same sort of sonic aesthetic, but I do like um, the difference in, like, movements. Like, mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, the dance of the Boreal Valley is like very quiet. I don't even, yeah, I don't even think yeah. the, I'm trying to remember if the, the uh, orchestra is even in that one. Um, yes, a little bit. I think it's very quiet, very, very subdued to your point. Yeah. There's never, there's never like a flourish. It just kind of stays quiet. Oh. I mean, obviously, in, in Dark Souls 1, the classic example is when you fight Gwyn. There's that beautiful, kind of mournful, you know. I mean, at the, at the, especially at the time, that was not how final boss music typically uh, sounded. Yeah. Well, especially what's come before, to go into the room, and it's... I mean, he's still bigger than you, but it's, it's you know, it's yeah, just yeah. Gwyn. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was saying, like, like a lot of... Um, some of the logic of size is from, like, those artistic traditions where you, you, you paint the king big because the king's important, you know? So it's yeah. like... You know, there, there there is an argument that it takes some of the magic away for there to be any kind of diegetic explanation for why Sif is big, or why some wolves are big, right? Like oh he, God, he's big because he's the best boy in the game's logic. You know, like it doesn't yeah. really. And then, well, let's be clear, he is best boy. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or she actually is Sif. Is Sif? I don't know Sif's gender. I that. don't remember, but I would go with she. And she can still be best boy. Yeah, you know what? Sure, absolutely. Didn't mean to imply otherwise. My goodness. What does the best boy do? Help the oh. key grip. Oh, God. <laughs> Is that a joke from Kiss Kiss Bang Bang? Right? Like, like. No, that's just a song by, uh, I can't even remember the actor's name, but the guy who played Biff in uh, Back to the Future. Oh. He has a whole song called Stop Asking Me the Questions, where he just sings about common questions that actors get asked. I like it. No, I, I was aware that wasn't Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, but there's that thing at the end where it's like, if you're wondering who the best boy is, it's oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> somebody's nephew. That's all right. You're back from AFK. What's up? What's Okay. So, did you did you walk away from your keyboard, uh, uh, Adam, because you were filled with rage? Or despair? Because you rightfully should be. Because why are we fighting kind of Sif? Oh, my God. Oh, I'm that's getting so... messed. I'm dead. Oh, you're <laughs> Good dead. Luck. All right. Well, we'll see how this goes. Can I sneak in a heal before things get real? Yes. Okay. Now what? Oh my god, that lunge. Oh, the lunges are so hard to avoid. Oh, I'm dead again. All right, let's try one more time. Okay, you were raging at <laughs> you were you were raging at the 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 the, the situation of society uh, rather than at this society. Adam said we we live in one. I hear. There was rage and despair, just not about this. Okay, this time, this time, we give the people the victory that they came for. <laughs> I do like the aggressive bosses and how that uh, that feels like a uh, carryover from Bloodborne. Right. It's it, it's interesting though because like in Bloodborne, you can parry them. You know, like it's like the the aggression, like. You can parry them. There's the rally systems. So you get health back if they take it away. Like it, like this takes away some of the mechanics built around that aggression while keeping the aggression itself. It's sort of an interesting <laughs> sitch. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's true. Um, I can't remember if there are any bosses in Bloodborne that you cannot parry, but like definitely all of the big enemies you can parry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we gotta play Bloodborne again. Yeah, man. I'll play Bloodborne kind of with anyone anytime, but especially with you all the time. <laughs> yes. Okay. This time we won't lose. Oh, yeah, quick little aside. So um, what I would, that song I was talking about, uh, I think there's a, uh, there's a studio version, which is a little more polished, but when he was, I think, workshopping it on the road for his uh, stand-up set, I actually prefer that one because uh, in the studio version, he's answering all sorts of different questions. But in the uh, workshop version, he just sings the same question over and over <laughs> again. <laughs> hmm. What's Michael J. Fox like? Really nice. What's Michael J. Fox like? He's really nice. What's Michael J. Fox like? He's nice. Stop asking me the question. <laughs> That is kind of a better art piece. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is the only question. <laughs> exactly. That is Especially like... Especially like being the other actor, right, in that film. <laughs> yeah, completely. 
well, like, being not Michael J. Fox. In terms of discipline as an interviewer, like the question I, I think you have to really, really learn to never ask is, what's it like working with person X? Because yeah. that's not a question. It isn't about the person you're talking to. <laughs> and <laughs> it has nothing to do with anything. It's very uh, transparent in a almost mean way. <laughs> right, yeah, no, exactly, exactly. I would rather be talking to Michael J. Fox is what you're actually yeah. saying. I mean, like, if you have a question about, like, you know, you and Michael J. Fox played brothers. How did you prepare? Like, you know, okay, fine. Like, that's a question. But, like, yeah. to, to just say, give me some dish about this person who's more interesting than you is, like, weirdly mean-spirited. I will say, though, probably the best the best occasion to ask that question was uh, uh, Ian likes to quote it a lot. It's when... Um, Oh gosh, what's the comedian's name? He plays Mr. Peanut Butter. Um, uh, Paul F. Tompkins. If he, yeah, Paul F. Tompkins. He he said he gets asked if uh, if um, oh my God, there will be blood. My English, uh, my English is so bad. Uh, um, there, there will be blood. Uh, uh, you're thinking of that guy, the the ham, the ham guy, yes. the greatest, the greatest ham alive. Uh, yeah, that guy. Wow, I'm doing it. Too. <laughs> we are we are currently fighting a big wolf. Yes, we're uh, distracted by the wolf. With red eyes. What is that actor's name? All right, he comes near me. I'm gonna explode him. Nope. <laughs> Ooh, that didn't I go. Didn't go the way it ought to have. We're so close. Oh my gosh, I cannot hit him. Daniel Day Lewis, thank you. Daniel Day Lewis. Oh, I knew yeah, I could. He, he, knew I could count on you, Ian. <laughs> he's asked if Daniel Day Lewis is. Uh, an intense actor to work with and he says he's not intense he's the most intense person <laughs> <laughs> on the planet I, I can't remember the origin of the quote but Lauren always talks about this one person who says like um, who likes to ask people who work in entertainment have you ever met a method actor who was not a straight white man <laughs> and the answer is always no right because for anyone else that wouldn't be like oh wow so dedicated to their craft it would be like this person is impossible to work with and I hate them <laughs> like <laughs> alright 755 should we try and push it with uh, the your last call fight? we may end up going a, like a couple of minutes over even if we succeed the first time so like that's your call you're the one with the um, let's do one try let's okay. see how it goes is there a bonfire down here or do I just warp out there is. It's uh, kind of, yeah. It's like in the field. Uh, yeah. No, you just passed it. Good. Back. Back. Also, I'm a couple seconds behind. So just passed it. It's not no, under. You, it's it's not under the big thing though. No, it's actually closer to the way we dropped in. Okay. Oh, I see it. You don't see me seeing it yet. <laughs> And then I will be waiting for you at Ariandel Chapel. Time is convoluted in Twitch Dran. Ariandel Chapel. Bojack really ruined uh, Paul F. Is it Paul F. Tompkins? That <laughs> That's the guy. Daniel yeah, F. Tompkins. Lewis. And, and um, uh, the other one, Will Arnett. Mm. I cannot hear their voices now without hearing Bojack or Mr. Peanut Butter. You don't, you don't associate Will Arnett with like Arrested Development or, or some. I mean that character a little, but mostly Bojack, especially because like Will Arnett has taken on a series of like uh, product commercials lately, which seems like a Bojack move <laughs> in yeah, a way. Yeah. Um, so like there's been like a Reese's commercial that it plays when we watch Hulu and I just hear Bojack like hawking Reese's peanut butter cups, <laughs> which yeah, like you say is weirdly appropriate. <laughs> It's also easy to picture like someone just delivering like a crate of them as part of his payment for it. And he's just eating them on the couch. So I forgot about this feature, which I believe is unique to Dark Souls 3. I have the mm -hmm. Slave Knight Gale summon sign. And it says this summon this this phantom will be summoned later at a separate location. Summon Slave Knight Gale. Um, yes. I mean, I'm going to do it, but that's that's interesting, right? Because like in any other game, he would just sort of pop out of the ground and hang out awkwardly until we fought the boss. You know? Yeah. I so so that's gonna happen but let, let's see where he pops up because i can't quite remember okay <clears throat> so by the way she's trying to she's trying to talk us out of doing what we're about to do common trope in these games but but again like much, in, in the painted world Del, 
I, I swear to God, I get so messed up with like Arendelle versus Ariandel versus versus Arendel, which is from Frozen. Anyway, um, uh, oh, yeah. Adam's saying he thinks this is only Gale, which I mean, that actually is kind of interesting. I think it, it is only it Gale. calls attention yeah. to Gale as a unique entity, which which will pay off when you see us play the Ring City, uh, dear viewer. But, you know, so like. In the in the original painted world, Priscilla tries to talk you out of uh, uh, just basically says leave. And the interesting thing is there's almost no reason not to leave. You know, like you yeah. can you can just leave like you are just a monster for like, you know, you want to make an item out of her tail or you're just a monster. There's no other reason to fight her here. Like this is the final boss of the DLC. <laughs> like it's it's a little bit different. Um, like I, I don't think I think it, it, it quite intentionally wouldn't be satisfying to walk away without doing this, you know? Yeah. And so again, this kind of evokes the idea of like a Lord vessel, right? Right. Like right. What is that thing? Gets a little blood born in here. <laughs> and he's one of my least favorite things in all of dark souls narrative. If that gives y'all anything to riff on meaning Gale, Adam, I think you meant Gale. Yeah. I mean, Gale is the threat as far as like answering what is, you know, the Dark Souls and how it relates to the Furtive Pygmy. So I am still flabbergasted by how little I remember about all that payoff. So the Ring City episodes uh, will be interesting. Yeah. Oh, there will be episodes. <laughs> yes, says Adam. Gale. Get your face. <laughs> So one thread that we missed is if we had done the uh, Hollows of Londor um, uh, story, um, Sister Freed is Urias' uh, actual sister. Yeah, she is a sister, but she is also the sister of someone we know or can know. Mm -hmm. And they have different, uh, they're invested in different outcomes for the world. You want to put some meat on those bones? What do they, what do they want for the world, the two of them? Well... So we know Sister Freed is invested in the, um, what's the word? The, uh, perpetuation of this world. Mm -hmm. Like she's, she's invested in keeping things as they are here. She doesn't want us here. She doesn't want us impacting, you know, change, growth. Uh, whereas that's all that, uh, Yuri is about usurping the throne and, you know, revealing humanity's true, oh God, form. The Age of Dark for real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but for real this time. Oops. Nice backstab. Oh, thank you. I missed. That'll happen. <laughs> so I gotta, I gotta say, aside from the lore and other things we've been talking about, aesthetically, Sister Free is great. Oh, she's, she's fantastic. She is just, she's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing you could say about her is she's just Lady Maria from Bloodborne with a scythe. Um, which, you know, I mean, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like what, who doesn't want that? So this is, this is the other thing is like blood, um, wasn't really a motif in dark souls one or two. Yeah. It very much isn't bloodborne as the title suggests, <laughs> but here, here the, the imagery of blood becomes really important in a way that I don't totally know what to make of. Yeah. Even when we, uh, in our previous, uh, sessions, when we were, uh, you know, going to the, uh, we were going up the tower and to the twin princes, the, the way you have to get, uh, the way you access it is by having that statue cut itself and bleed into a, uh, a little thing. So yeah, there's, there's, there's something going on with blood in this game. I don't, I don't know that if there's really reading into it, but I think that's why a lot of people draw, you know, connections between the two. Because blood in Bloodborne kind of does what uh... <laughs> Adam says. I do enjoy the aesthetic dimensions, but a boss fight, like look at that cutscene, a boss fight in three phases. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> he said die is not ew, but Yeah. Dark Souls is a lot ashier. That's true. Well, this one, yeah, ash is a huge motif. But but yeah, the, the layering of motifs, like the idea, 
Because like bl- blood does in Bloodborne what souls do in Dark Souls One, like in terms of like the function of the world, it's like an a, you know an eldritch power and whatever. So to have both is is like, I don't know. It's All it's right. it's so opulent. Here we go. So now Gale shows up. Yes. So why lore wise, why not have Gale in that first phase? Like does he? Yeah, he, that's what I'm. Uh... Ooh, I'm not sure about. He, I, I mean, the implication would be to be like that. Maybe he's more invested in Father Ariandel. He has no beef with Freed. Yeah, and I mean, Gale's been around a long time, so I mean, he might only be, you know, concerned with Father Ariandel. I don't, I don't quite know. Uh, you know, the timelines are so muddied anyway. But uh, oh lord, they share a uh, a health bar, by the way. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh god. So it doesn't matter which one you're attacking. There are, there are no wrong answers here. Except getting crushed by a giant chair. That's the wrong answer. <laughs> I mean, certainly. Yeah, and there, there is something about, like, a, the Lord Vessel is now a weapon, <laughs> right? I mean, it, it always was a weapon, kind of, if you think about it, man. But, um, <laughs> you know, it, it'd be like, um, it'd be like Ganon throwing the Triforce at you. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's taking an image... <laughs> That the that a previous game was built around and just like using it as literally a blunt instrument, right? See, so, yeah, I can't remember if Gale sticks. Oh, I'm dead. Ooh, be not dead. Isn't there a third phase that you've abandoned me for? Shh. <laughs> I mean, uh, what I meant is, good thing I finished the fight as soon as you died. Good job, <laughs> me. All right, let's see what Gale does, because I can't honestly remember. There's an argument to be made that three phases is too many phases. I mean, like, at this point, we're subverting expectations, right? So, like, if there has ever been a two-phase boss fight, oop, then a three-phase boss fight has to be on the table, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is this is the white ape of this game. Or maybe I should say the white <laughs> ape is uh, is uh, freed. Sure. Because they cl- they very clearly build in an expectation, and then yeah, they want to yeah. This is for a, a loop. This is a Sekiro reference for those who did not play Sekiro. There's a boss that you think you've beaten, and then uh, you haven't. Man. And yeah, I mean, Adam is right that part of the motif here is when there is a, a the surprise final phase. It's always so much more aggressive than the previous phases. Yeah. Wait. So is Gale gone? Because I I'm a little behind in your video. Um, I he was here a second ago, and I didn't get a message that he died. Is he just being a wimp? I don't see him. Ooh boy. I guess he's gone. Yeah. So that I mean that tends toward our our lore theory. He wanted something. From, oh, maybe he just wanted the Lord Vessel. Oh, maybe. Ooh, I'm frostbitten. Dang, I can't get a hit in. I was hitting her so much before. Camera you can parry her, but I don't know if that's worth your time. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to get a full health bar and try to get some licks in. There we go. Oof, oof, oof. Timing is so darn tricky. Yeah, that's not what you want. Don't think this is going to go well. Ron Howard voice. It did not go well. <laughs> you got time for one more attempt or you got to go? Uh, I think I'm okay for now. I just uh, texted Kimberly to see was, she was going to go for a walk, which is why I had to wrap earlier. But now that uh, you know we're in the middle of a storm, I don't know if she's still going to go for a walk. That makes sense. There's a coffee, by the way, Ian. <laughs> I love the intimacy of our streams, by the way. Can I, can I just say? <laughs> yeah, that's someone who is listening. Like, this is the mechanism by which you tell someone in your house that there is coffee. Yeah, that's. <laughs> that would be amazing if you weren't in the same household and you could somehow do that for him. Like, 
I made you Alexa, co- make my good friend Ian coffee. <laughs> That's when Alexa would be uh, worth a damn. <laughs> he says thanks in the YouTube chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, I don't think anyone in the house slept too well. Probably the kids. They, God, they have no... <laughs> to sleep like a child again. Mm-hmm. All right, I think I'm going to use a different weapon this time. Okay. Just to have some some spell access. Spell access? Spell access. Oh my gosh, Whoa. I didn't even get a notification. Did I, didn't, you? I didn't either, no. Okay, Captain Igor. <laughs> catch him, catch him, catch him. I could not. Gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. Gotta catch Igor. Gotta catch Igor. There we go. <laughs> well, I don't know. What does that get? I guess this. <laughs> that was very surprising. Yeah, I, I totally missed the notification. Well, Dark Souls. I love these games. Okay. This time. Do we we do all three phases every time, don't we? Yes. My my my. So maybe unpopular opinion. I love that these battles take forever. Uh, I this game has really made me appreciate the whole boss thing even more. And uh, my son was playing um, Shadow of the Colossus the other day mm. and asking where the enemies were, and we told him this <laughs> game is just bosses. And. Uh, did that blow his tiny mind? Yeah, well, and I was specifically just thinking, like, it, it's actually the, the whole boss thing has been around for a long time, but for some reason, with the advent of, like, uh, newer games, it just seemed like for a while there it was sort of less of a focus because, like, Mega Man was all about the bosses. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, uh, Mario Brothers is not, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, what the... I mean, Mario Brothers isn't even about combat as much I guess so maybe bad example but yeah I hear what you're saying some games are much more about the rank and file exactly I mean to the point that even in I mean I did this is not me just this is not me just shitting on destiny to hurt you but like there are a <laughs> Dude, lot of I shit on destiny <laughs> it, anytime you need that anytime there are ads right anytime there's a boss but you're so not confident that the boss is interesting to fight that you have to throw the same enemies the players already been fighting at them in abundance during the boss fight. Clearly, you're not that invested in the bosses being good, you know? Yeah, no, it's... I mean, and to, I don't play many MMOs, so I don't know other games. Like, I know that raids in particular are built around, I think, the idea of bosses, but, like, I have never personally... Uh, well, we never finished the raid in Destiny 2, so I don't know what Callus is like or any of the other bosses that show up in that game. We got, um, to, the, we got to the boss of the raid. We never completed it. But, you know, exactly. we well, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, I, so yeah. I don't. I mean, I guess what I'm saying is that I don't really know what what the, it's like to succeed at it, <laughs> or to even do it. I think we were kind of yeah. fumbling the first time through, and then it was, you know, it's a miserable time to get back there. So yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. I mean, like, a Warcraft is like built on its uh, the raid bosses, right? Like mm-hmm. people having a very specific roles at very specific times. Yeah, yeah. This intersects with a thing that isn't even about bosses per se, but it's about, like, the choreography, you know? The idea right. that, like, what I like about these games is anything you should be able to... Anything oh, that sh- Oh, that's a lot of fire. <sighs> anything that should work in principle does work in practice, generally, unless there's some yeah. kind of reason, right? The, the issue with, like, raids for me is that there's no reason. It's just, like, arbitrarily, that's not the choreography for this. Let's watch Gale here. Eyes uh, on Gale. Okay. So he's attacking her. He is. Maybe he just got killed last time. Oh. Yeah, he's still attacking. Okay, so he must have died and we just missed it. Must have, yeah. Apparently we're not getting notifications, Igor. (laughs) Sorry, it's probably Igor. Igor. 
Adam says, speaking only for myself, duration isn't the issue. Is that these fights demand perfect play through distinct, increasingly difficult phases, lengthening the learning loop and punishing the process. And yeah, to be to be fair, that's the part I enjoy, which um, puts me in line with Miyazaki. I guess he's the masochist, but also so am I. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting though. I mean, like uh, you know, as with any oh, form God. of with any form of masochism, you know, what someone uh, Pucci did die on the way back to his home planet. Um, like, like you know, <laughs> you, you got to negotiate what you, what is on the table if you're going to be a masochist. Um, right. And it's like for me, long ass fights can be a challenge. Um, exacting play to me is more interesting when it's when it's quick i mean like i, I think sekiro kind of nails that sweet spot there are very few long fights in that game owl father is pretty fucking long um Dude, owl he, father was nuts even that if you're playing perfectly is a lot quicker than you might think you know oh yeah um, i mean to be sure yeah so you know to me the thing that's least interesting from a difficulty perspective is just a, a giant hp soak right not to say that's what this fight is um but, like, you know, just making it longer is not inherently interesting to me. This is why it took me so long to get even a little bit into Monster Hunter. Because some of those fights are just mercilessly long. You know what? I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. Where is it? Divine Blessing. Oh, wow. <laughs> yep. You know shit's real when Lucio uses a Divine Blessing. All right. All right. Stagger, stagger, stay staggered. Ooh, she backed up. Ooh. We're fine. It's fine. Nothing's bad. Oh. Ooh, souls. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 and Adam's saying like he just hits he hits a point where it's functionally impossible for him to progress. Like that's it's a brick wall for him sometimes. Oof. Huh. Well done, sir. That was more you than me at the end there. <laughs> that was a good fight. And so this is what I was saying. This bonfire over here is uh the dredge heap. Ah. This is almost unbelievably weird that there are two I th look, yeah, there are two bonfires this close to each other. Like, that is unique in the series, I think. That, like, a bonfire that you can, like, not just see from the previous bonfire, but, like, it's... I'm just... I'm here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the thing, right? I and mean, we, we were talking about this a, a little bit before, that these games are different in terms of the amount of uh, RPG stuff they demand of you and the amount of, uh, of, of action game stuff they demand of you. And I think for various people, some of those are going to be hard barriers, you know, like yeah. it's not, it's not that it's rewarding and challenging. It's not even that it's just straight up challenging. It's that it, it I will never complete this, <laughs> you know, for a given person. Right. And that can be a bummer. So welcome to the dredge heap. Uh, the whole world is all wibbly. It's all folding in on itself. Like a delicious but tragic pancake batter. Mm. Tragic batter. <laughs> and Gail's message is take the plunge. Hmm. Do I have business with this person? I don't think it matters. Okay. I mean, I have no. It's true that I have no business in uh, in particular. This environment is very cool. I'm a sucker for Kenning that, that is like totally in world, like stone hump tag, you know, mm -hmm. when someone has like a, an alter, an alternate thing to call them by that only makes sense in world. <laughs> so for clarification, Adam, you're talking about the last demon from dark souls one or the last demon in this game. <clears throat> I'm so taken by this grand sight. This must be what it's like to be a god. That's good. That line, I really like that line. This must be what it's like to be a god when she's just like look, ah. looking at a ruined, impossible world. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't think there's actually any more demons, but you could be remembering something that I'm not. Oh, the twin the princes. I see what you're saying. The demon princes. <laughs> yeah, that'll that'll be interesting to extrapolate uh, you know, when we get there cuz yeah, yeah, about yeah. It in that context. Yeah, I will say, you know, Dark Souls 2 caches those checks when it writes them. The the last giant is the last giant until you start going into the past. Well, actually, that's not quite true, is it? There are like two hidden ones later, but they're very hidden. And uh, the ones they, that I got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, in the, in Black Gulch, there's those two uh, giant warrior th dudes that presumably no one knew about. Actually, there can be up to six of them, I think. <laughs> like it, 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 It's actually kind of a cool encounter where um, how many you meet Depending depends on, on. Yeah, yeah. How many people you have with you. It's 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 that and something else. It's like how many times Pardon you've me. summoned, how many times you've died. There, there's some modifier. I saw it too, yeah. And on that note, I do need to start wrapping. That's all good. That's all good. Um, this has been a good one. We, uh, Thank we feel, you, everyone, for joining us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely, lovely having everyone by. Feel free to tune in next time. Th this is usually the time we we stream. Um, this would be <laughs> admittedly my fault. No, that's sad. I mean, that's your you're you're a, you're a father and uh, and a good one at that. And that's a that's a rare enough thing in this crazy old world. Let me just go ahead and level so everyone gets that rush of dopamine from leveling. <laughs> dopa, 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 dopa. I mean, yeah, I give myself some health. <laughs> I'll need it where we're going. Level 99. 99. Number 9. Number 9. Was, was, is there a crazy uh, stat requirement for Karthus uh, Flame Arc? I feel like there is. Hmm. Because I haven't, I, it's silly that I don't have fire on my sword. Um, I don't think there is, but there might be. Maybe like 25? I gave him the tome, didn't I? Why is he? Why isn't he selling it? Did I already buy it? I would still see it if I bought it. That would just be at zero. I'll look this yeah. up. I'll figure out. Oh no, there it is. No, that's fire search. Car oh, you know what? Carthus flame arc. Oh, is that a dark pyromancy? Mm, I don't. I don't think it's a dark pyromancy, but it might be an Isoleth pyromancy, which means you got to give it to Carla. Oh, so if I gave him that tome, I can never learn it. Is that how that works? No, he won't take it because it's he's because he he specifies between magic that's for uh, for men and women because of the daughters of Isoleth. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's explore that next time because I. Uh, you don't have the tome. I the Carthus tome. I'm I'm very confident that I do, but he's not selling the thing. So yeah, I got to look up what I how this got a little sideways off the rails. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, given our luck with NPCs in this run, I, I'm just shocked. I have any spells to buy, but um, <laughs> all right. Well, this has been a delight as always. As always. Truly, thanks for stopping by and chatting. Uh, yeah, we everybody. really appreciate it. Yeah, it's always fun. So uh, you go about your daily. So I hope <laughs> I hope the weather treats you reasonably well. Uh, and uh, hello from everywhere, and goodbye from anywhere, Ashen Ones. <laughs> 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 <laughs>